Welcome, one and all, to the triumphant return of the Back and Bone Show. Today, Matthew and I suffer through the most terrible of heat waves. It's 113 degrees outside, and we were trapped in this little box, trying not, desperately trying not to turn the air conditioner on to fuck up the recording. Uh, It was brutal. But, uh, nonetheless, we had a great show. Um, we got a Deadpool 2 review in here for you. A little bit of spoilers. Not much. I don't think anything's gonna ruin the movie for you if you watch it. But, um, you may want to be cautious about that when that comes up. If you haven't seen it. Uh, we're a little late on this because we, um, we did some fight predictions for UFC 226. And, however... That has already passed, so I think you guys know what happened there. Um, some some plans for the future. MC Weapon and KC Masterpiece. We're going to break down the album for you people. It's coming out. <laughs> Stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Turns all your bad feelings into good feelings. It's a nightmare. An Uzi? <laughs> I'm not from South Central Los fucking Angeles. I didn't come here to shoot 20 black 10 year olds in a fucking driveway. I want a normal gun for a normal person. Whatever you're reaching for better be a sandwich because you're going to have to eat it. You thought he was white before? You should see that sucking man. I'll use small words so that you'll be sure to understand. Motherfuckers, welcome back to the hey. Back and Bone Show. Hey, ha, 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 hey. After our longest hiatus yet, we return yes. in filthy hot Pasadena. It is hotter than hell yeah. out here today. It's dick fucking hot. I'm sweating my balls off. Uh, Matt rolled up a little early. I wasn't quite set up. I was outside uh, hanging a heavy bag and going blind staring at the sun while I was trying to put those fucking hooks in. Yeah, it it was uh we took off early today. We got up at like five thirty this morning because I had a few clients I had to train, and then uh, I slept the whole way here. I was super fucking tired. I took a little tincture of uh, CBD. Oh yeah, and I just went out. That'll do it. Who doesn't love CBD? Um, it's my new favorite thing. Yeah, because I went so many years where I didn't smoke weed because I would get too paranoid. Uh huh. And then. Uh, it's like CBD has given me the ability to enjoy all the things that I used to love about smoking weed, the relaxation, right. but I didn't really love like the getting high part anymore. Yeah, you know, I, I like that. Let's open up talking about that for a little bit, because you know yeah. what is really weird is like, I still enjoy smoking weed, um, but I don't do it that often anymore. I very rarely smoke weed because uh, for that exact reason, like I developed paranoia later on. And I used to never have it. Yeah, so that's what happened to yeah, me. Yeah, I started to, uh, like, I, I'd say over the last few years, like, what happened, it just, like, I had, like, a bad trip for the first time. And I was just like, holy, f- man, fuck that. And I quit smoking weed for a long time. And I got back into it. And um, then still enjoying it most of the time. I'd occasionally have, like, a really bad trip. And eventually it was just like, this isn't even... Those are so bad that it's not even worth it. Yeah, well, right. and what it, what happens, too, is after you have one bad trip, it kind of diminishes. Like, even if you're not necessarily having a bad trip when you get high after that, you still have that underlying worry that yeah. you might. It, so it's, it's not it almost, quite the same. Yeah, it almost feeds it. It's like yeah. you go from where it's like, oh, this is just all fucking sunshine and rainbows, but it's like, oh, you can you can see the shadows now <laughs> you know that they're there well like yeah mine was just like mine was like your typical anxiety attack i just felt like my heart was gonna beat out of my chest and it was weird too because i didn't even know when i had my first like anxiety attack after smoking mm-hmm. weed i didn't even like know what an anxiety attack was i'd never even had one before in my yeah. entire life um so it, like it just like hit me hard and i i thought i was having a heart attack and then after that i quit for like years after mm-hmm. that i didn't touch weed for like three yeah. years after that I, um, for me, it's, it's a lot more, uh, it's, it's very psychological and personal. Like I I start getting like when I have a bad trip and this only happens to me on weed, it doesn't happen to me on more powerful psychedelics. It only happens with, well, I mean, weed actually is 
would I would say weed is a pretty powerful psychedelic in its own respect it's just not it doesn't make you hallucinate super hard right but it does yeah. it does invade your mind pretty powerfully yeah um but it gets very like i i think about the same things like the same personal things but then when i'm high i get way more worried about them i go that, like this is fucked yeah i gotta fix this that, that's this what, is going wrong that's and, what like, i was gonna say the uh the impending sense of doom yeah. That you get when you think about things while you're high, it mm -hmm. feels much more like dramatic. It's very fucking intense. <laughs> and then like once you're not high much, anymore, yeah. you're like, you'll think about something that, that some of the same things and you'll think about it and you're like, oh, that doesn't, I could fix that. Yeah. I'll figure that shit out. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but when you're high, it feels like it's like, you feel like a complete failure. Yeah. You feel like you like, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just well, not. I, I remember um, my very first bad trip ever. So me and uh, me and Austin, you remember Austin, right? Uh huh. So uh, me and Austin were on our way to um, to uh, meet up with some some people he knew from the East Coast. We were, we were lit when I lived in Santa Maria. This was mm -hmm. at that time, and uh, we did a little trip to L.A. because he knew some people from the East Coast. They just flew in, and uh, I remember Austin was selling weed at the time, and he had like an ounce on him or something, a shitload, mm -hmm. and he was just in the car rolling joints the whole time, and. As he was rolling the joints, we were smoking them. And as we're smoking them, he's rolling them. So we just, we smoked, I remember, like, a really large amount. We smoked, like, we smoked, like, a quarter ounce or something on the way to L.A. Okay. <laughs> like, more, probably more weed in a short period of time than I've ever smoked, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to the, we got to the place, we met up with, uh, we met up with his friends, and what did I, what did we do? We, we went to the hotel room, and I was just sitting there, I'm like, I'm way too fucking nuts for this right now. And I went out to the balcony. There was this really cool balcony uh, outside of the room. Like, I went into the hallway, and then outside of the hallway, there was, like, this, this um, like, stairway area. You know, like, when you're in a hotel, they have the, the emergency exit stairway shit. Yeah. There was something like that, uh, but without an alarm attached to it. And I went through, and then there was this, uh, this balcony. And I started seeing cars and hearing noises, and I could see all these little people walking around. And we're up high. We're on like something like the probably like the seventh or eighth floor. We're pretty high up, you know. Yeah, yeah. Especially as a stoned eighteen-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I am like a super stoned eighteen-year-old, and all that sensory input just like flooded my stoned brain and I just went fucking nuts and I started like examining my life and everything that was like wrong with me <laughs> I was like oh it was super powerful and I, negative I, I definitely couldn't do the tall building thing when I'm high well I can't even barely do that normal I can't get on top it's really hard for me to get on top of a tall building without just consistently imagining falling to my death and like crushing my skull on the concrete do you do the um <laughs> do you do the thing where it's like i'm not worried that i'm gonna fall i'm worried that some synapse is gonna fire in my brain and i'm just gonna jump <laughs> oh i think about that all the time <laughs> all the fucking time especially like, too, why would i do this well, why am i doing this especially, especially too <laughs> since i have epilepsy oh, like that that's yeah. always entering my mind like just that i have like really bad I have uh, OCD when it comes to that, where I'll mm. think that's, I'll have days where I'll spend the entire day with thoughts like that running through my head. Yeah. Like, what if my brain just fucking short circuits and it makes me do things I don't want to do? Or yeah. like, that's like one of my biggest fears. I think, um, uh, I think that's just a human fear, like in general. Yeah, like, definitely. I, everybody has that little thing where it's just like, I mean, how many times in your life, which, you know, is, is, a, is a rhetorical question because you're, there's so many you wouldn't really know. It's unquantifiable, but how many times in your life have you done something, something simple, maybe something innocuous, uh, and just been like, why the fuck did I do that? Yeah, <laughs> all the time. Yeah, where you'll just say something, where you'll like be talking to somebody and you'll yeah. say something, and then you'll start thinking about it, and you're like, wait, was that weird that I said that? Or why did I say that? And then well, just, the more you sit there and think about it, though, the more it weirds you out. Yeah, I remember one time um, when I was in junior high, this is like the perfect example of this mm -hmm. i remember one time when i was in junior high i like i walked into class and i like hugged one of my teachers and i was like why the fuck did i do that <laughs> that is strange and she was like super just like into it she like very was like okay cool give me a big hug and i was just well, like 
what? And then I turned around, and I was all, what the fuck? Well, you know, it's funny. When I was a kid, when I was in, like, junior high and stuff like that, I was a lot more impulsive. Like, I would just do shit without thinking minute. about it. You're telling me that you were impulsive <laughs> when, you were, uh, when you were a preteen? Very much so. Oh, man. And I would just, I've never met anyone like, like that. I, I would never in a million years examine anything I did. Like, I was constantly just doing shit. Yeah. Like, if I was sitting in class and I thought about drawing a dick, I'm, I was drawing a dick. And I thought it was funny. And <laughs> there was like, no thinking about There was no there was thinking about consequences dicks. of any kind. Yeah. And then it wasn't until... Probably around the time I was like 18 and around oh. the time I had that first panic attack, that's when I started to, you know, think about shit like right, that. Right, right, right. Oh. But it is pretty crazy the way your mind changes. And it's like you're still the same person and you still kind of feel the same in your head, but it's like uh, you just very slowly evolve. Things things just kind of slow down, I feel like. Definitely. Like, I think that's yeah. what maturity is, is like yeah. a little bit of space between thought and action. Just sort And of you builds. do, but you do miss... Well, I don't know if I do. Uh, there's parts of it that I miss. I do miss the the impulsiveness in a way. Mm-hmm. Like, I do miss having the balls to just do certain things without thinking about it and not giving a shit. Yeah. But at the same time... You'd be dead right now. <laughs> yeah, it feels <laughs> a lot... Exactly. It feels a lot better to be a fully... Because some people actually never lose that right they just stay right. like that and they're always fucking crazy and you're like what's wrong with this guy you're absolutely right there there are people who are like that i saw a guy outside of uh, uh outside of ralph's today when i was going to get those uh bubbly waters and uh he was switching back and forth between yelling at a wall and yelling at a garbage can See, and that... that's a guy who never stopped. <laughs> he never uh, stopped. He never stopped acting impulsively. He's still doing that right now. <laughs> he was saying some shit about like, like, and I'm telling him to his face, <laughs> you, you it's never always... do shit about it. <laughs> Isn't that the funny thing about, uh, I see that all the time. It always seems like there's a, uh, you know, really like aggressive homeless dudes. Oh man. Oh, they're they're yeah. never really aggressive towards other human beings. They're always just kind of aggressive towards inanimate yeah. Things. Well, if they were aggressive towards human beings, uh, someone would have to do something about it. At some yeah. Point. A police officer would be called. And the thing is, I think those, um, I think those deranged homeless people are less deranged than uh, than they play off. Right. Like a lot of yeah. it is, uh, a lot of it is, it's almost like that that hipster sort of satisfaction where it's yeah. like I'm gonna behave the way I want to behave and I'm gonna act weird in public because that's just what i want to do right uh there there's a there is a level of thought process to it um and a a lot of it is them being disturbed but there's an awareness that like the places i can go diminishes over time if i start acting in ways yeah that yeah they have to have they, they yeah they have to have a certain level of awareness yeah we i did see a guy one time me and uh capato were in santa barbara And there was this homeless, like a younger homeless guy. He was probably like late 20s, mid 20s. And he was standing outside of Starbucks. And these two like uh, college girls walked out of Starbucks and they were both drinking their coffees. And um, this homeless guy goes, hey, can can you guys spare some change? You guys spare some change? And the girl was like, no, sorry. And this homeless (laughs) guy just went off on her. He was like, he was like, you know what? You're not fucking sorry. You're not sorry. Don't fucking tell me you're sorry. You're drinking your fucking mocha frappuccino. You're not sorry at all. And I was like, what? I like this, this guy. guy. Just, I know. That's exactly what I told Capato. I was like, bitch Damn. Out. And then that, this girl goes, what the fuck, asshole? You don't know me. He goes, yeah, I know who the fuck you are. Mommy and daddy paying for school, drinking your mocha frapp. Just get the fuck out of here. That's and awesome. I was like, fucking this, love this guy. This was, uh, it was like out of a movie. I was like, yeah. man, this I mean, guy was... I, he was I, ready to yeah. unload. I do gotta say, I do gotta say, uh, if you have it that much together, you can get a fucking job. If you can pull that, absolutely. Like, That's the like, first yeah. thing I told Capato. I was like, like dude, I this don't guy, feel bad for him, but yeah. I like him. <laughs> yeah, this guy. I mean, it's very, it's a ballsy move, but uh, for that guy to be that insightful as a homeless yeah. man, he can, get, yeah, he can figure something out. Yeah, like you don't Come have on, to man. be on the streets, bro. No. Now go uh, if you guys have some time while you're out here. Uh, head out, head out to downtown LA. Mm-hmm. Uh, get yourselves about, I'd say about Fifth and Maple, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> about two blocks away from the last bookstore in downtown LA, and you're gonna see some shit. Like, wait, that, so okay, so last a, time we were down yeah. here, 
when we came down here back in uh for the concert back in april or may or whenever it was mm-hmm. um for the first time ever because i've been to downtown la a few times because that's where ariana's taken me down there because mm-hmm. that's where she went to school at and um downtown la is fun it's, it's, really it's pretty weird cool place. Well, it like, is weird because it's like being uh, in Oz. It's the rules don't apply there. It's completely no, fucking it's kind of like, you know how in in, in uh, Inception, they'll be like mm. they're walking down the block, but then everything starts shifting yeah. like a puzzle. Yeah, that's kind of like downtown L.A. because it's Absolutely. like you'll be walking down one block and it's nice and it's new and there's yeah. some five star restaurant. Absolutely. And then you turn the corner and it is some of the most vile mm-hmm. homeless living conditions. Well, like it's brutal. We well, went for the first time. I saw Skid Row. Oh yeah. I was like, uh, by by uh, by Little Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. You feel legit in danger when you're out there. Like, uh, as, well, yeah. Like, we just drove by, yeah. and uh, people don't tell you Skid Row is not. It's like it's a, it's a, it's not. You you envision it in your head as a one single alleyway. Mm-hmm. With no, some it's, homeless it's people. Like it is a city. Yeah, it's a so, city of homeless people. Yeah, like you see that shit on movies like um like like Spawn, remember like right. the homeless yeah, alley exactly. that people are like yeah. it's like that. It is but it's just also like that. bigger. There's it's more bigger, of it than it's that. It's massive, all the buildings are vacated and empty. Yeah. It's it's literally it's funny because people will talk about like, you know, apocalypse and this and that, and it's like that is a fucking apocalypse for those yeah, people. For that sure. is a fucking that is hell on earth if I've ever seen it. It's gnarly. And yeah, when I see those people who are who are that destitute in those situations, I think they are probably at the point where they probably couldn't get a job. They probably yeah. couldn't get themselves out of that. Well, have you ever seen the uh, Tenderloin in San Francisco? The That's ten- pretty the Tenderloin district? No, I don't it's mean, pretty I bad. It's not as bad as Skid Row. But it's pretty fucking bad. I mean, literally every corner you I walk down. I thought the Tenderloin is... was going to be a gay strip club. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, have you been to the have Tenderloin? You ever heard, <laughs> have you ever heard Dave Chappelle's joke about it? No. He was. Uh, it was from when it was from his uh, his comedy special that he did in San Francisco. Okay. And then he was like, uh, he goes, yeah. He goes, I just got into San Francisco today. Went down to the Tenderloin. <laughs> Ain't nothing tender about that shit. <laughs> it's like, once you go there, you know exactly what he's talking yeah, about. It is yeah. the perfect way to fucking describe that area. Ain't nothing tender um, about it's just, the loin. It's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. I would say that even though the Skid Row is by far the worst homeless area I've ever seen, the just the... The homeless people that you encounter, and, I, and I'm and i ta- talking about this like I go to Frisco all the time, which I don't, but the homeless people that I've seen in Frisco and just from the people I know that live there, it's it, they're more aggressive. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like a very, it's funny too, because people envision the Bay Area and their head is like this. Very nice, expensive. Very nice. And like, it is in some parts, but it's almost like because it's so, it's almost like because you have the pendulum swinging so far, so yeah. hard in that direction, it swings really fucking hard in the other direction. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, there's that whole thing going on with, uh, with Bay Area, with um, all the tech conglomerates that are buying up all yeah. the property. No one can afford to live there. So what happens in societies in uh, in in uh, in little micro economies uh, when when it becomes so expensive for the bottom line of, uh, of like living in civilization, the people who are who are homeless and destitute, it's like you can't just get a job at fucking Starbucks and no. get an apartment. You know, like no, you, you can't even yeah. get, you can't fucking get a job at Star. Like who the fuck can can afford an apartment on their own working a job at sure. Starbucks? That's what I'm saying. Like, but I mean that that's what I mean is like the getting out of the gutters is a much longer road, especially in those places. Yeah, and like yeah. It's like, oh yeah, it's six thousand dollars a month to rent a room in fucking Silicon Valley. Like, you know? it's crazy. And and I'm, a lot I'm exaggerating. Of the people... I don't know how much it is, but I'm just like, well, I... a lot of the people that I know that live over there, um, you know, everybody just rooms together. Yeah, you know, they'll 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 yeah, people are all bunked up and people like, are yeah. bunked up. Yeah, and it's 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 crazy, man. It's it's changed a lot, even in just because I had a lot of friends that moved there right after high school, and um, even in just that, you know, ten years ago, in that short amount of time, it's changed so much. It's crazy. I mean, the fucking price of living is just getting. It's, it's like it's it's uh you know sometimes do you ever like you get your you you know you go to work you get your money you get you get paid, and then 
you're just like, where the fuck? You could just be doing like nothing, I and could, it just I goes. Could, I could easily spend a hundred dollars a day. Oh no on, problem on bullshit. On yeah, just like oh, just I got myself bullshit. something to eat. I got some gas in my car. Yeah, uh, you know, bought bought some I don't know some groceries. Right. Oh, that's everything I made. That's it. Like <laughs> when I was a kid, and when I, I was a kid, I still have rent to pay. A hundred dollars <laughs> felt like so much money when yeah. you were a kid. Like if you have a hundred dollars as a child, you're like fucking rich. Yeah. But also, that was a different time. Like, yeah, it weird, definitely weird, took yeah. you further back then. Yeah, we're, it's weird how fast inflation is happening right now because there isn't yeah. really like a um, there isn't really like a a dollar specific value that we can be like, oh, this many dollars was this many dollars. Right. When we were yeah. A kid. But well, and, and that's the thing too. It's like it, the the amount that the amount that it's inflating. And then the amount that they're raising, like the minimum wage by, it doesn't add. It doesn't mm-hmm. match. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, right, right, it's, right. it doesn't even out. Well, uh, here's the thing, dude. I, I have this philosophy uh, about uh, minimum wage. Just the fact that there is a minimum wage, uh, it sets the fact that it, it sets it that we're in a tier system. Yeah. So minimum wage, you're on bottom tier. What is bottom tier? Well, you can't afford a place to live. You can't afford to feed your family. Uh, you can barely afford to feed yourself and live in your car if you can afford a car at minimum wage. Yeah. Um, if you're working 40 hours a week, mm-hmm. you know, that's crazy. That's fucking nuts. Um, yeah. But then there's better things, but nobody offers you anything better unless you have specific qualifications. And most people don't have specific qualifications. That's what makes it the general population. You know? Yeah. That's well, and it's like, not like back in the day where, you know, it's was so stupid to me when you hear like some of these old timers and they'll talk about, well, back in my day, it was harder because this... And it's like, okay, in some respects, yeah. there were things that were harder about back in your day in the sense that, okay, maybe it was harder to have, like, easy access to food or yeah. just little things like that, right? But at the same time... But also, they didn't have bullshit food either. Everything they were eating Exactly. Was, well, was, there's that. Yeah. And then also, too, at the same time now, um, just like back, back in the day, you could have just a normal kind of average job and then be able to afford to raise a family and have a yeah. wife and do right, the right, whole right. thing. You that could, is you could be a shopkeeper right. and you could get a house and exactly. you could get a family and you could afford to, yeah. you know, but that, that ain't fucking that happening was your now. Job. That ain't happening. No, nowadays, like no, you know, they, they 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 you didn't have to jump through the type mm-hmm. of hoops you have to jump through now in order to get that shit. And and that that statement actually really uh that scares me about the uh, developing world of automation that we're we're getting into where I think about it and it's like all right well as we build more robots that can do more jobs or more more machines more computers that can do more jobs that people used to do one are we gonna start paying people more and having less responsibility uh, less responsibility to do bullshit unnecessary jobs because we have robots taking care of that. Or are people just going to lose their jobs and their and the one percent is going to turn into the point zero 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 one percent? Yeah, <laughs> like, that that's definitely something to think about. I mean, there there's kind of the obvious. Well, I was going to say there, there's so there's certain things that you you know you would assume that you need kind of the human interaction. You know, like I would. But, they, my, but the it's, first but thing it's that, not quantifiable. I know. The, I know. That's the, what I was going to. The need for human interaction. So the so the fucking bean, the bean counters when it comes down to it aren't going to be. Uh, they're not going to factor that in. Right. Like if they if it becomes economically viable, they're going to put everyone who doesn't make over a hundred k a year into an internment camp so that they don't have to deal with them. It's like we've already got your jobs covered by robots. We just don't want you around taking. Can you imagine? Like, like it's like here here's a legitimate, not not even a a possibility, but almost like a probability. A hundred years from now, you're sitting at home, you're thinking, man, I'm fucking hungry. I want to get something to eat. Well, I'm going to call a drone. The drone comes and drops off my food. You don't have to sure. go anywhere. Yeah. Fuck, my hair is looking a little shaggy. I need to get a haircut. Drive through salon. You go and put your head inside a big fucking uh, dome. You, you'll have a, you'll It gives have, you the exact yeah. haircut you want. You'll have a box in your house. Like, yeah. It'll be like your fridge, your right. TV, and yeah. then you'll have your haircutting machine. You just stick your head into and it just chops everything up. Your, and... your kid wants a new toy. You go on fucking whatever.com. Amazon. Amazon.com. <laughs> And you pay 20 bucks to 3D print your kid a new toy yeah. right there. Like, it's going to be 
unrecognizable. How about, I love this on um they have it on um what's that fucking show? The the um the one that uh what's his name? The Family Guy creator. Oh, uh, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, uh, Seth MacFarlane. His his show that's like the uh, Star Trek ripoff. Oh, I, like, yeah, I don't know what that's called, but I know I know yeah, what you're talking they, about. They I have like that. they have the food synthesizers where they right. just like type in what they want and it just makes whatever. And, like, yeah, it's like a 3D printer, but for food. I'm like, when we get those. <laughs> but can you imagine though? Would it take the? Uh, would it? I would assume that it would take like a certain amount of a joy of, of joy out of the experience of eating food. Oh yeah. When it just makes it for you on the spot. Like you don't appreciate it as much as if when you can when you make it or you can see it being made and Absolutely. Part of it is the process, you know. So A- Absolutely. I love cooking. And think about how many horrible like cancers and like yeah. super diabetes we're gonna get from yeah, this, there's gonna from be, this ultra there's, synthetic plastics that we're eating. <laughs> nothing comes for free. So yeah, that exactly. uh I, I can't also, those, those uh, the matter that creates that food has to come from somewhere. It's not like it just is pulling it out of the air. Like Yeah, well, that would be a good premise for a movie. Like, what if uh, they have, like, a food th- synthesizer, and then it creates some kind of, like, new, never-before-seen, super-advanced metabolic disease that just wreaks havoc on people that is a good idea almost for like a uh for like a near future uh yeah. like a near future movie like we, we've invented the food synthesizer we've cured world hunger blah, yeah. blah blah and then you know and then it just fucking kills half of the world and they're like well they did cure world hunger <laughs> i saw a movie everyone's the, eating <laughs> i saw a movie the other day that was actually and I, I wasn't expecting it to be what it was but it was called upgrade Oh, I didn't see and, that uh, yet. Yeah. It's pretty good. It, it has a... Uh, it's kind of one of those near future... It's that, it's that guy who looks like uh, looks like uh, a poor man's Tom Hardy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he's actually been around for a while. He's great. He's been yeah, in a bunch on, of stuff. He was on Devil. Um, yeah. He that... was in a... You know where I first saw him on was? Hmm. The OC. Oh, really? Is yeah, that where he played the, He played the main character's brother. Oh, that's funny. And then they replaced that. him with somebody else in the later I, seasons. I never watched The OC. I've seen like a couple episodes of it, but... Um, if if you watch it's funny i didn't start watching the oc till i was like 18 yeah and they had all the the back episodes on demand mm-hmm. um i got fucking hooked on it i watched the entire series mm-hmm. it's actually a really addicting good show <laughs> <laughs> the oc um what the fuck is that guy's name it's gonna drive me crazy now because i did a review on it and i wrote his name in there but uh anyways that guy's a good actor he was in um uh he was in was it prometheus i think uh, the yeah, alien he was movie. in Prometheus. He was, uh, that's right. He was, he was, um, what's her name? Uh, he was the Numi, boyfriend. Numi, Numi Rapapas's. Numi Rapapas. Rapapas. Rapas. Numi Rapas. Is that her, her name? Numi Rapace. I always say Rapace. I don't know if that's how you say it, but. I always uh, get Rapace confused with like Rapapore, so I always try to like add a syllable to it. Like, <laughs> no, me, she gets married to Michael Rappaport. Yeah, that'd be um, hilarious. His name is Logan Marshall Green. Um, you know, yeah, he's great. He's, so he's, he's good. It, it was so. Anyways, that movie Upgrade was really good though, and he plays like this. Uh, his wife gets killed, and then uh, this guy implants this technology into him. Mm-hmm. It's like a little bot, basically, yeah. that can control his entire nervous system. He, he gets and like paralyzed or something. He gets and that's paralyzed. Why that has yeah. To happen? yeah, yeah. That's why they that put the, the bot in him so it controls yeah. his nervous system. Um, but yeah, it was actually kind of really flew under the radar. But that was a really good movie. I didn't think it flew under the radar. I see it everywhere. Like, really? Uh, yeah, I'm seeing like billboards for it. I see uh, trailers on YouTube and stuff that when I'm when I'm watching videos. Uh, Every time I'm like browsing through new movies that are coming out, that one's like one of the first ones. So yeah, well, definitely check it out. Yeah, I'm I'll, I'm for sure gonna watch it. I I do it, I do want to see it. It's a it's a dark movie. It's a uh, it's you know, but all those movies are dark. Like all the f- not see? too distant. Yeah. When, how rare is it that you see like a positive not too distant future movie? Oh, dude, we are we are way too like. <laughs> We're way too aware of the What's direction the, the future is going a good right question. now. <laughs> that's a good question. Actually, we should leave this up for the uh, okay. view, for the viewers. Can you guys uh, name uh, what is the what is the most positive, not too distant future movie of all time? Mister Nobody. Mister Nobody. No, no, I no. got one off the top of my head, and this well, 
I don't know. But uh, I would say maybe like Demolition Man. Kind of positive. Right? No. Demolition Man's super dark. Was it? The world has been taken over by corporations by Taco Bell. and people don't have se- <laughs> people don't have sex anymore and like But they're happy though. Like Are Sandra- they happy? They seem happy. They don't seem happy to me. They seem super repressed. <laughs> and they, they just need like- some Good old fashioned people, testosterone. People go to prison for cussing and shit. It's like, that is true. It's Actually, only, yeah, yeah the, it's super dystopian because, like, I all, guess maybe because yeah. the movie was so goofy, I just remember yeah. it as being a happy it's, future. It comes off positive, yeah, but no, definitely. <laughs> I, not. I love the part when uh, Sylvester Stallone and Sandra Bullock put their little sex He's headsets all, what on. What the fuck is that? He's like, "Who's good? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it." He's uh, a yeah. That's a funny movie. Yeah, Demolition Man is super funny. How great was Wesley Snipes in that? He He's was, really fucking he good. That at, might be his crim. He, that's his. That's yeah, his. Uh, that was magnum him at his snipiest for sure. Yeah, like, that's his best role. Oh man, that was the role that. That was his ninth symphony. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that that role. If any role got him Blade, it was that. He was sure. great in that. He was. He had those crazy. I'm on a lot of cocaine eyes, like, every time he turned around. He did. (laughs) I remember when I was watching that movie, for some reason, when I was really, really young, it must have been the uh, colored hair. Uh I used to always get Wesley Snipe confused with Dennis Rodman. Uh And uh, I think Dennis Rodman did a movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme, didn't he? Uh, Double Team. Double Team, yeah. Uh, That's why I used to get it confused. The villain on that movie was Mickey Rourke, right before he turned into a cave troll. (laughs) That was his last, that that was was his final role before turning into a cave troll. That was the last handsome handsome face movie that Mickey Rourke had. We've talked about Mickey Rourke before, too. I think when we did our podcast with Wyatt, we were talking about how heinous he's got. Oh, yeah. And I brought uh, up pictures of him. Yeah, Wyatt thought he was transitioning. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. That's right. Uh God, poor Mickey Rourke. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened to him. God, he looks bad. Um, really fucking cheap, bad. cheap Mexican plastic surgery, man. He just had, I guess so. And he just fucking... Like, he, he redefined plastic surgery because he really looks like he's made of plastic. Like He he, he took it to a whole new level. Yeah. He, Him, um, Michael Jackson, of course, the obvious. Yeah. Um, there's just some real fucking... You know, the, the funny thing about plastic surgery is, like, these people get this work done... And like whenever you have you ever seen some well I guess it's kind of the question I was what I was gonna say was have you ever seen somebody who got plastic surgery done and then they looked better and I was gonna say no but then again I guess you wouldn't really know if they had gotten it done if it did look right good. that's the so, idea that's the idea is surgery plastic surgery here's where looking people natural well here's where people fuck up they go overboard right uh, you get yeah, a little something course. done. No big deal. It's so, like yeah, just shave a shave a little shape onto my nose. Yeah, that, well, that's what. Like, so you, you know, know. You, what comes to mind when I think about this was uh, Howard Stern, and they had this episode of Howard Stern like ten years ago where they did a staff revelations game, and his revelation was that he had had work done, and they just shaved a little bit of his nose off, and they added like a little bit of a bump to his chin. You probably wouldn't even have noticed. That's a, like that's a, it's that's a gentleman's plastic surgery. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> it's a, so just a little work, yeah. just a little bit, just a little polish. You know, you don't yeah. need to completely fucking landscape the whole. Fucking well, because thing, when you like, go too hard, when you go too far, it drastically alters the person's appearance. Like right. Jennifer Grey, the girl from uh, Dirty Dancing. Yeah, you know, have you seen her now? No, she got her nose done. And she has that distinctively, sorry for the un-PC out there, but she had that distinctively kind of Jewish nose. Right. It, it was, you know, it had the slight hump it, to it. and It was very, it was very, uh, um, it, it was very, like, it was her look. It was, it was her know, lip. It was like signature. And her. then she like, shaved it. She shaved that fucker way down. She might have taken solid inch off, I'm going to say. Maybe not that much, but it was a lot. Yeah. And, um. So that's she a lot looks. Of you wouldn't recognize her now. Yeah. She looks completely fucking different. And they said that, that there's always. Been, it's always been speculated, and who knows how much of this is true, because apparently, according to uh, Patrick Swayze, she was like a pain in the ass to work with really? on Dirty Dancing. <laughs> yeah, he hated her. And you know, Patrick Swayze. I guess they had to shoot. You know that scene where he was lifting her out of the water. I guess they had to shoot that scene like hundreds of times, and Patrick Swayze was getting fucking pissed because she's like, look. She's a small girl, but you're lifting this broad fucking... A hundred times. In like, water, too. 
Like, that's going to fucking, you know, he felt like he was going to break his back. Yeah. And she kept giggling and laughing and ruining the take. So he thought she was, like, super unprofessional. Mm -hmm. But um, anyways, word on the well, street so it was, is. It was, it was specifically her fault that they had to do it 150 times. That was what I had yeah, heard, okay. yes. Um, but uh, word on the street is after she had that nose job, that kind of tanked her career because nobody recognized her anymore. It's not right. the same person. Yeah, of course. It, that, that's the point of a signature. Like yeah. your signature look, that's what, if you're famous, people are paying for you, your well, signature. Your... And if you think about most really, like, well-known celebrities, none of them, they're handsome or pretty, but they always have some kind of small character defect, the most right. famous ones. It's very rare that you get some, like, supermodel looking one that, you know, rises, unless it's like a, there's, there's rare exceptions, like a Brad Pitt mm -hmm. or like something like that. But, um, you know, they always have some kind of defect because, like, right. people, there's just, there has to be some level of relatability. Yeah, you know? they have to be relatable, but they also have to have uh, something specific that makes them them. Like, yeah, perfect people all look the same. Sorry, perfect yeah. people. You wouldn't be perfect if you look different. It's true. <laughs> Very true. Hey, um, we like it. We like you, perfect people. But, you know, you're not different from any other perfect people. No. You're completely interchangeable. <laughs> exactly. Um, so before we started recording here, we were talking about the fights this weekend. and um, Right, right. Keith does not yet know. Because he, he was telling me how excited he was for, Rotten, no for, <laughs> for Max Holloway versus Brian Ortega. See and I agree. smile on your I, face. I, I was me. more excited for Max Holloway versus Brian Ortega than any other fight on that mm -hmm. card. Because it's two fighters who are really legitimately in their prime yeah. about to go at and it. And they're both just lethal. They're so yeah. exciting. Yeah. But here's the problem with that. Fight got canceled day before yesterday, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? One of those two days. I don't know. I'm hearing about it <laughs> so right for now. The, you for can't the, ask me. For the uninformed, what happened was, and I had actually noticed this myself prior to even, I kind of thought something was up. Because I was watching, I watched Max Holloway's open workout, and he only hit mitts for like two minutes, and there was no pop on his punches. It, he looked flat, super flat. Hmm. And apparently, what happened was he had been showing. They don't know what it's from, but they thought that he had been showing concussion-like symptoms wow. for the week leading up to the fight. So he was doing interviews on UFC tonight. And, and Michael just, Bisping like, asked him, he, or what? yeah, right, Michael yeah. Bisping asked him, he was like, Max, did you just roll out of bed, buddy? Are you all right? He's, he was cross-eyed. Oh, one shit. of his eyes was shutting. The other one was open. He was like, ah, no, it's okay, man. I'm good. And like super slow. So everybody could see something mm -hmm. was up. And apparently he, uh, he went to sleep and uh his coaches like couldn't like they took it took forever to get him to wake up he was sleeping like way more than he normally would all these weird so they were thinking they were either s symptoms from the weight cut but according to his coaches he hadn't even started his weight mm -hmm. cut yet or symptoms from a, a, a concussion it looked like yeah. concussion symptoms he was slurring a speech um, but now i just read on i haven't gone on the internet too much today but when i woke up this morning i read online that uh they're thinking it's a possibility that he got like water poisoning from drinking too much water prior to his weight cut that can happen yeah so they don't know what it is but yeah because what happens a lot of the time like is uh the water manipulation thing uh i do it, i do it for my fights uh where i'll drink we do it very controlled. We don't do we don't go like super overboard. I'll just start by drinking two gallons a day, mm -hmm. then the next day two gallons a day, then the next day a gallon and a half, then one gallon, then three quarters. Right. You know, and then it yeah. just goes down until you preload, yeah. and then you yeah yeah, and then your your body just gets used Flushes to having it out. yeah your body just gets used to having an excess of water, and then you know you just flush yeah. You know? Well, so that fight is scratched. Sucks. They tried to uh, last minute get um. Well, fuck. They, I know. <laughs> I was I was so sad. Fucking UFC, man. These these guys can't put together a card without a marquee fight getting canceled. I know, man. People are going to start watching Bellator now. I, I watch Bellator every time. Yeah, I know. Bellator fights never get canceled. 
You're Why is right. that? Yeah, <laughs> they really well, don't. UFC fighters. When was the last time UFC, you heard of a Bellator yeah. fight getting canceled? Yeah. UFC is really bad about Dude, that. UFC now. fighters are too bougie. They're like, oh, I got water poisoning. I don't, I don't feel well, like it. In <laughs> in uh, in Holloway's defense, apparently he did not want to uh, have his fight canceled. His coaches and the UFC all intervened and were yeah, like, for no, sure they they did. can't for fight. Sure. So. He's um, not going to stop himself from fighting. Like, no. That was an absolute joke, by the way, about the fighters. <laughs> they never are bougie. They n- the fighters never want to cancel. Uh, fight, you know, they're unless, always down. Unless their name is Tito Ortiz. Well, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, is that one still on? Is that going down? Or Chuck what? Liddell is fighting Tito, yeah. supposedly. It's um, going down for sure. And uh, Vitor wants to come back. He's been Vitor, he's already like, back on testosterone, yeah, looking yeah. fucking jacked again. He's he's, uh, he's 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 so fucking. <laughs> why not just be honest though? Because I knew he was going to do that. I knew so, that that hey, whole. Hope I don't get tested, but I'm what? definitely on steroids. Well, no, he's so he's just so, be the be the Nick Diaz of steroids. Well, just be like everyone knows you're on. It. Well, Vitor is so fucking shysty. Like he. He does that whole, this is my retirement fight for the UFC yeah. thing, all that bullshit. And then as soon as he fucking retires from UFC, he all of a sudden starts getting big again. And then here's how he announces his uh, potential comeback. He walks up to fans that recognize him on the street. And he's like, how would you feel about seeing me come back? And he's like, I don't know, guys. I'm just gauging interest. I'm just gauging, you know, if people want to see it, I'll do it. And it's like, dude, you had this shit planned the whole time. Sure. I mean, Um, what kind of fucking fan is not going to say to Vitor's face, no, I think you should retire, bro. You're done, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think think you're done, dude. He, he, uh, there's some interesting fights for him, too, because Mashita just signed with Bellator. Um, however, uh, I think, uh, I think um, Bellator does testing, though, I believe. It's like a goddamn sauna in yeah, here. Yeah, just like, for you guys that don't know, I just took a bottle of water and I put it on my chest. We really, we need a, uh, we need a, we need a silent, like, uh, cooling system in here. Because, do. like, I don't want to turn the, I don't want to turn the AC on. It's going to make a big buzzing noise in the background. Yeah. These fucking mics pick everything up, but, yeah. um. Well, so, uh, Mashida signed with Bellator, but I don't think, uh. Vitor should sign with Bellator. Just go to Japan. They'll let you Rising do whatever dude. you want to do. Yeah, and just they're gonna they're gonna provide everybody. you with steroids. There. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So just go do that. Fuck it. They'll get you that. Go out on just have some yeah. wins. You know, go out they'll, on some wins. They'll get you that clean, GMO free, organic, <laughs> that organic like, cow testosterone, testosterone yeah. shit. That's gonna like that grass fed. Yeah, like the good stuff. You know, ultra pasteurized or is that bad i don't even know no, ultra pasteurized would be bad yeah right. i think unpasteurized unpasteurized unfiltered just yeah. raw <laughs> um yeah so yeah, there's some but with Mashita going over there there's some uh, interesting matchups you know they got they're gonna do uh rory mcdonald versus gay garden musasi dude fuck yeah and uh, that last gay guard fight where he fought uh, Carvalho, to, yeah, he took a guy who was on a 15 fight win streak, I know, champion, and made him look like a first fucking timer, and yeah. beat the dog shit out of I, him. I, like, I love that matchup between him and Rory. I just feel like uh, I feel like gay guard is just going to be too physically big for him. Seems yeah, like he's a big I guy. don't know, man. Um, I don't. Yes, Gegard's bigger. I think Gegard's a little thicker, especially yeah. especially up around the traps. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think uh, I think frame wise they're pretty similar, aren't they? They're they're frames. We are... we, we talked about this we on did, the last podcast. And I, I think Gegard's like Rory's like six feet, and I think Gegard's like either six one or six two. Yeah, so it's not that big of a it's difference. Not far off. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm sure I'm sure that uh, Rory could make up the difference, or yeah. Gagar to make up the difference, whatever, whatever the well, direction they decide to go with that. Who do you got for uh, DC versus Cormier or DC versus Cormier? DC versus Cormier. He's fighting himself. <laughs> he's fighting out there, himself. People. He he's his can't own, lose. He's his owner. Uh, Matt Lovato has been admitted admitted to the hospital for concussion like symptoms. Um, <laughs> we had to cancel the latest episode of the Back and Bone <laughs> Show. Stipe versus DC. Who do you got uh, for that? I gotta, I gotta go with Stipe. Me too. Uh, I, I'm not like super sure of it. This is a, obviously a really close fight. Um, DC is a phenomenal wrestler. He has not shown any issues with uh, with rangy guys in the past, aside from John Jones, and that's a different story. Um, but Stipe is just. 
he's the fucking man, you know? Like, is, he, and he's, he's, he's constantly overlooked. Yeah. He um, really, too, if you go back, like, so a lot of people have been talking about how, you know, Cormier is undefeated at heavyweight, and he is. Um, however, if you go back and look at his record, look at all the guys that he's beat at heavyweight, none of them were really, like, wrestlers. You know, Frank Muir, Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson, you know, is good on the ground, but he's not, like, a wrestler. He doesn't, like, shoot in for... He'll shoot in, but he's not, like, a, a college-level wrestler. Or... I, yeah, yeah, Roy Nelson's not, like... You know, the, the point being, but uh, who else? Jeff Monson, Antonio Silvia. The point being... They're mostly jiu-jitsu guys. They're, uh, they're and, mostly uh, jiu-jitsu guys, Josh yeah. Josh Barnett would be the most wrestler yeah, of them. Yeah, that's what then, I was going to say. But then Josh Barnett, like... Josh Barnett's... He's, he's a good wrestler, but he's not like a that level of wrestling and he's no. more of a catch wrestler he is so steep a is probably the out of out of all the guys that dc's faced he's probably the highest level mm -hmm. uh technical like amateur style wrestler i, I just don't see holes in steep a's game no like steep a is too solid I, I just think i think they're very evenly matched but steep a is bigger he's got more reach and he's a he hits harder yeah and i think he's just gonna i think he's probably gonna catch him with something yeah like uh fucking dc's got to get those stubby little arms you know yeah close enough to do well, anything and, and steve bay is going to be fucking throwing hammers at him i, I saw a really in. good uh an breakdown too analyzation by uh, dan hardy okay. and he was talking about dan hardy's such a smart guy he's, he's really i love his, him in the, in he, the he's slowly becoming box. yeah he's slowly becoming his uh his little breakdowns pre-fight breakdowns are some of my favorites yeah. now He's he'll do like a 30 minute yeah. where he'll just break down all their whole skill set and he was breaking down Stipe's punches mm -hmm. and he was talking about the level of power that Stipe has mm -hmm. and he was talking about basically how Cormier is not going to be able to get away with a lot of the shit he gets away with because like let's say Jones for instance right Jones has um, like end range power like not even really he doesn't really even have like a lot of power but he's right. a lengthy striker Stipe is not quite as long as Jones, but he's got a fairly decent reach. But he throws like shovel, little tiny shovel punches and knocks yeah. people out. And he was showing, you know, like the, um, you know, when he knocked out Verdum when he was moving backwards and he just barely tapped him mm. and he fucking dropped. Yeah. Um, Arlovsky threw a little shovel punch, boom, out. Like he throws he, these. He throw, but he throws like, throws those little short punches, but the he throws them with uh stability like yeah there's no does. there's no pushback there's just no. solid connection yeah they and are and he is really accurate yeah so, like that's one of the big things that gets overlooked about stipe is that he hits with really good accuracy yes he does. he's uh he he th he throws and he makes contact where he wants to make contact yeah. and the casual viewer watching isn't going to pick that up they're just going to be like that guy's big and he hits hard yeah. Look how good he did at hitting that other guy. Like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. If DC, DC really to me the only way DC can win that fight, he's probably a little faster than Stipe. Maybe. Maybe. Um, he definitely, he definitely Stipe plots forward a little more. I think Stipe is not not big on uh, on on fluid footwork, but he, yeah, he, he, DC moves around a little more. But I just don't really. I could see DC moving around more and all that shit, but. I just don't really see him being able to do anything with it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's hard for me to imagine DC really being able to, okay, let's say he does move around a little and he parries some punches and he shoots in, penetrates for a double. I don't really see it going anywhere from there. Mm -hmm. I see, I just see Stipe stuffing it yeah. and hitting him. Yeah, I think uh, I think the biggest thing that, um, I think the the smartest game plan for DC and the the only way that I really see him him winning this fight is either by catching him just like you know just throws something out there and it happens to land I don't really think that's gonna happen because Steve has got a chin uh, or by uh, you know not not to uh, talk shit on this style but uh, a wall install. Tactic. Yeah, like that's, he's he's that, really good at that. He I, he, he's fucking super good at that. That's a boring ass fight, but it's a it's a strategy, and it, if you can make it work for you, it'll win you the fight, man. Like yeah, uh, Randy Couture did, master of the wall yeah. stall. Yeah, but Randy Couture had this this meanness about it, where he would just like take your soul away. He would just be breaking he, you while he was he, wall stalling. He did, you. but it depended though, because there were certain fights where if there was. If the guy he was fighting, like he, that was basically what he did to Vitor. 
Yeah, but he yeah. fucking shredded. Me. Well, in he his young, yeah, in his yeah. early. Well, that's what I was gonna say. It kind of depended on the competency of the ground game of who he was fighting. Mm-hmm. So if it was somebody like Vitor who had like in a, it was he's a black belt, you know, so he's got a solid ground yeah. game. But Vitor is not really. Vitor will get dominated by high level black belts, right? You know, or Whereas high if, level wrestlers or anybody who's real, yeah, yeah, yeah. real good on the ground. Exactly. Yeah. So, but if Randy was fighting somebody like when he fought Nogueira, or I'm trying to think of some other examples, and I know there is, but if he was fighting somebody like that who had a pretty competent ground game, he wasn't really able to use that wall right. and stall like very effectively. You sure. know, he kind of just because he wasn't able to take those kind of risks yeah. that he would against I, a Vitor. I, I, or, yeah, I just mean to say that like he. He didn't. He didn't fucking sit on it that much when he was no. when he was wall installing. It, he was just fucking chewing you up. Like, he was always doing something. Yeah, throwing little. Even if it was just throwing little fucking short yeah. punches or or even just like yeah. his head positioning or he's just crushing you with that yeah. big fucking melon. Like <laughs> that shit sucks. People don't know. Like that sucks when a real good wrestler with a real hard, real round bowling ball head is just smashing your temple. And you can't turn your face the way you want to turn it. <laughs> the, yeah. It, it controls your entire body, and it's demoralizing. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Um, well, and then we also got... Um, now the co-main event is going to be um, Derek Lewis versus uh, Ngannou. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a toss-up. Because, uh, you know, it's it's uh, now there's a lot of question marks about Ngannou. Mm-hmm. His ground mm-hmm. game. Sure, everybody's everybody sees uh, you know the chinks in the armor. But, yeah, um, and then when people are talking about you know, well, I, I think a lot of people are taking Lewis for that fight now because they think he's just going to shoot in and take right, him down. Right. But what people forget is that the reason why Stipe was able to take Ngannou down is because he took the chance of getting hit. He came in with punches. He landed solid punches and then shot in for a takedown, a la like a, not the, exactly the same as GSP, but he set up the takedown with punches. Now, if you go back to when Nganu fought Curtis Blades, who Curtis Blades, for those of you who don't know, is a really, really good wrestler who's on a, you know, pretty solid hot streak right now. Um, it's cold here. Oh, cool. Thank you. I had to... I had to we're, we're using these water bottles as ice packs. Yeah. Um, so, for those of you that don't know, Curtis Blades, really, really good wrestler. And actually, I think that was Ngannou's first fight in the UFC. But Curtis Blades, like, yeah. could not take him down. But yeah. it was because Curtis Blades has very poor striking and he couldn't penetrate for the... Mm-hmm. couldn't set up right. his takedown. So, uh, Derek Lewis has much better striking than... Curtis Blades, he's got some power, so there is that potential there. I think he could, uh, you know, he could set up. Some, I don't know, man. That that's a fucking. Whew. I just I got a feeling somebody's going out, dude. Yeah, I mean, um, God, I don't know, man. That's that's just a lot of power. Those are those it's are a big lot of hands. power. Those are big hands in that fight. Yeah, I want uh, Lewis to win. I love yeah. Derek Lewis's personality. That Derek guy's Lewis hilarious. is great, man. Um, he's out of. Uh, that, that spot in Texas, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. Crew Bob. Yeah, uh, I, I, I never trained with him, but I got to drink with Crew Bob. Oh, he's really? Like super fun. Like he's a cool guy. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, we were at a kickboxing match. Uh, uh, um, Anthony, my my roommate, he he fought in it. Super cool fight, actually. Um, Anthony, need this guy a legal legal knee. It was an amateur fight, so there was no knees to the head. Mm. And he's this guy uh, in the solar plex. This guy also is like two weight classes bigger than him and also like a head shorter, just all fucking jacked. Mm. Uh, knees this guy in the solar plex, puts him out. The guy drops. He's just Damn. like, ah! And uh, the referee calls it an illegal knee. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. On the video and everything, you can see everybody knows it was a completely legal knee. So they let him continue. And the guy actually, uh, in a Muay Thai fight, wall installs him the whole time he wow. wall installs him on the ropes so many times that the ropes actually collapsed the ring <laughs> collapsed in the fight so what was up with the ref why didn't he can't he like flag him for that or for no for well wall installing? uh i don't not really because clinch is a big part of muay thai yeah. i'm not really sure how the rules work for that but clinch is a big part of muay thai so what he was doing was he was doing these uh double underhook clinching yeah. and he kept just pressing him against the ropes and against the uh the corners and everything and, it, and he fucking just 
was throwing little like baby side knees pop pop and uh it was enough to rack up points and he ended up winning the decision um but uh crew bob had some had some guys fighting there that night and like after afterwards we went out in downtown la and just went to this like underground bar it was literally underground like there's this doorman out there and we thought like we were doing something wrong <laughs> we we're like uh hey we're looking for this spot he's all the bar all right so you're gonna go down the hallway turn right <laughs> it's like uh you're gonna pass by three doors and then it's gonna be your fourth door on the left and we're all okay is and there a secret this, password dude there's this dark corridor we're all like like, you don't know spots like that exist out there you know yeah, like no, there I... could be anything going on in any of those doors you know yeah. somebody could be fucking a goat there could be <laughs> like people could eating another show. person there could be yeah like there there could be ghost hunters in one room <laughs> i don't know but yeah that like uh but yeah the point was just like uh, the, that team they're 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 fucking cool guys they're super humble they're really friendly mm -hmm. uh so you know Derek Lewis. Good dude. He said uh, he called out. Uh, apparently, he really wants Derek Lewis. Really wants that DC fight. Yeah. And kept calling him out before the fight, and they had to sit next to each other on the panel during the press conference. Oh yeah. And uh, DC asked Derek Lewis. He's like, "Yeah, man, what's the problem? What do you got against me?" <laughs> and he was like, "Derek Lewis goes, you disrespected Popeye's chicken, man, with that commercial you did two years ago." Did you ever see that? No, I didn't. This but that's commercial great. <laughs> where it's Daniel Cormier just dancing shirtless with two Popeyes chicken I did drumsticks see that. in his I hands. I did see that because they were doing and, uh, like memes and shit of that yeah, everywhere. Yeah, like yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's great. Apparently, he loves Popeyes chicken. Who doesn't love Popeyes chicken? There, there's some other good fights on that card. Um, I thought you were gonna say there's some other good chicken places. <laughs> <laughs> there's some other good KFC. Well, a little you know spot what? called KFC. KFC. Bad, you ever heard but, of it? Yeah. Uh, well, traditional Chick -Chick for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a. They got a, a little controversial, bro. I know. <laughs> They've got a Pettis versus um, Kiesa. Yeah. Kiesa's. I think Kiesa's gonna walk through him. You think so? Yeah. I think Pettis as mentally has. He's kind of like broken. He was doing so good, and then yeah, yeah he just kind of shut down. I'm always gonna kind of root for Pettis. I love his fighting style. I love like. I'm a big fan of all all of his fights, but I just love that. I love those lethal kicks that he has. Oh yeah, like what he did to Cerrone, like that was one of my favorite performances because he just he went all like you know dick out on it. Yeah. Just, bam, and he was like, oh, I can hurt you with that. Bam, yeah, bam, that was, like just crushed him. Yeah, but I think that was probably the last time he had yeah. a win like that. Ever oh, since sure, then, sure. man, it's like something fucking something broke i don't know man. maybe he just doesn't want to do it anymore i, I, I did know. hear an interview like, the other day where they were saying they were talking about how duke rufus was saying that his, his trainer duke rufus yeah. was saying that um dr duke rufus dr duke rufus was saying that uh he uh pettis just like got into partying and stuff and oh he wasn't really? really showing up for training that sucks. And, and then uh but apparently but they say this before every anthony pettis fight He's on a he's whole new level he's now. Totally, he's really taking it serious he's totally now. Totally remotivated. He's back in bullshit. there. Yeah. Um, that sucks. But then they got uh, what's the other one? Mike Perry versus Paul Felder. Um, I don't be good. I, I don't uh, really know them. <laughs> I'm just gonna be completely honest. I don't know who. Either I don't know of those who the fuck are. you're talking about. <laughs> um, what's the other one? There's one more I know that Matthew I'm forgetting. Perry and Corey Feldman. They if should. They I would fought, rather I would see. Matthew, who do you think would win, Matthew Perry or Corey Feldman? Oh man, uh, if Corey Feldman uh, got clean, then um, I think Corey Feldman would I think, win. I think Corey Feldman's a little more street, you know. Yeah. Like I mean, uh, plus Matthew Perry like looks really shot out. Like I can't picture him they, being you think able they would to be in the same weight class. No, they, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm counting on I'm counting on Corey Feldman being able to move, man. Corey Feldman's gonna. Like, I don't circle. think either of them are gonna move well. Uh, Look, they do, Corey Feldman they both have that cocaine enthusiasm though, and here, I want to see here's that the thing, in action. Dude. Corey Feldman spent a lot of time at Neverland Ranch with Michael Jackson when he was growing mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. Now you know that Michael Jackson had to have taught him some dance moves. Oh, when he you're was right, over there. Yeah. So there's probably a good amount of like movement he's got some coordination. Yeah. He's gonna be able to pick up the boxing, the kickboxing, real quick. Oh man, Matthew Perry doesn't look like he's done an what? athletic thing they other than picking up the 
fucking straw to hit the coke. <laughs> Picking That's up his probably tutor. probably about the most athletic thing he's so done in his life. Just, just this idea, dude. I'm having so much fun with this thought in my brain right now. Imagine... Mm-hmm. Shout out celebrities like like a combination mm. of celebrity deathmatch and celebrity boxing. Yeah, but MMA. MMA. We're gonna yeah. do this. No one's dying. I just mean the intensity of celebrity deathmatch. Juice up celebrities yeah. who are all shot out and like out of the out of the game. Give them like a month of training with throw like Mickey really Rourke good, in there. Yeah, perfect throw candidate. Mickey Rourke in there. Juice them up. No testing. Give them as no much testing. cocaine and steroids as they want, and yeah. fucking just let them go. Matchups like Matthew Perry and Corey Feldman. I like it. <laughs> I love it. I loved celebrity boxing. I thought that even though the fights were always horrible, dude, it um, was so it was fun. pretty entertaining though. Remember when uh, the one I always remember? I think it was Greg Brady boxed. Who was it? He he boxed Danny Danny Bonaduce. Danny Bonaduce. Danny Bonaduce whooped yeah. his ass. Danny Bonaduce KO'd him. Who did Screech uh, fight? Screech whooped somebody too. That was hilarious. He's like, I'm actually he? really seriously into martial arts. And was like, he, Screech looks like shit, Screech, but you won. So. Screech always claimed that he was a black belt. I remember they. Do you remember that show, Celebrity Fit Club, where they would take all the fat celebrities and they had to lose weight? Uh, I never watched it, but yeah, I know. I know. What Screech you're was about. on that show, and he was uh, he was telling one of the. Um, they had this trainer on there named Harvey who was like a former drill sergeant and uh, him and Screech didn't get along and Screech was like um, if you accepted an invitation to formal combat I would fight you and the Harvey guy just goes like fucking crazy he's like I'll wear your ass out motherfucker you never talk to me like that <laughs> he just goes fucking formal nuts. invitation to combat <laughs> a formal invitation to combat god what a dork yeah he's I know he's like moron. he's famous for being a dork but like you don't always have to be fucking screech you can just grow up and be what's his name something dustin diamond, diamond. Dustin diamond. There did you know he shot a fake porno he I shot a porno a porn. no he shot a porno where he had a stunt cock and he uh Man, <laughs> he, he, how much more humiliating to he find out well that it's a fake for porn. a long he didn't admit it was fake till like later on yeah. but um it was him filming himself and then all of a sudden it would cut to his dong and it was like a, it was a formidable dong, you know. It was a uh, of good quality, and um, yeah, it, it, you know, he was just it was him using a big fake penis to say it was his. It wasn't like outlandishly big, but you knew it wasn't Dustin Diamonds. Yeah, maybe he's just got a shy wiener. Maybe. He just didn't did maybe it could it could be nothing wrong with his his wiener. He just didn't want to have his wiener on camera, or maybe he has an embarrassingly small wiener. Could be. I'm trying to find out who he fought on a... I can't remember, but he won. I remember that. And he, he loved having the opportunity to tell everybody that he has real serious martial arts training. He, um... Yeah, I don't know who the fuck he fought. I can't find it. Um... Hmm. They need to bring back celebrity boxing is what they need to I mean, do. Celebrity boxing was great. Um... I was watching one the other day where they had, like, I totally forgot about this. They had a uh, Oscar De La Hoya versus Shaq. What? And, uh, yeah. Have you seen that? No. Um, Put that on. Let me see this. It's more competitive than you would anticipate. Um, really? Yeah. I mean, Oscar lights him up, you know. He goes to the body a bunch. But it's just when you see these two together... You're like, all right, yeah, that's why there's weight classes. Because there was a few times where you could tell Shaq kind of shook him well, a little bit. You know what? Oscar De La Hoya, you know, much respect, much love. He's, uh, he's world class and everything. But he's uh, he's on the couch right now, man. Like, he is doing a lot of cocaine and partying. and. Well, I don't know when this was, uh, when this was from, though. Really? This, oh, so this this might looks be, like this might be old. This it was older. This looked like it was probably from like 2007 or 2008. I forgot about this too. Tanya Harding. I just saw this because it says 2009. 2009. Yeah, I just saw this because I'm I watched. I'm just looking uh, at pictures of it, and it is so silly. Yeah, they have looking. the whole thing on YouTube. I think. I just saw this. Uh, I saw that movie I Tanya, and they talk about how she went into boxing. Yeah, she fought a uh, fucking Tanya Harding boxed. Uh, what the fuck was her name? Jones, Paula Jones. Okay. Um, and then Todd Bridges fought Vanilla Ice. He <laughs> beat Vanilla Ice. Um, I can't find this goddamn. I can't find this. Uh, what do you call it though? 
Wait, I thought Vanilla Ice won his fight. Oh, Diamond, Dustin Diamond. <laughs> Dustin Diamond fought... Uh, oh, he fought the guy from... Palilo? Huh? I don't know. This guy's name is Palilo. Palilo. No, he fought the guy from... Uh... Shit, I can't remember the show. He was the other Screech. He was a Screech from uh, from a different oh, show. Oh, like okay. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like the original Screech. Yeah. The guy was, he was like a lot smaller than him, though. He was like... Yeah, they don't even have his uh, the guy's name, the guy's first name. They just have Palilo. Palilo. Hmm. He, he did win. He knocked him out. Yeah. 123 in the it was a It was a serious, round. It was a serious dork off. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, good times going down memory lane with, uh, with celebrity boxing. Spend a lot of time on celebrity boxing. Yeah, but you know what? I think it's what the people want. You guys want more celebrity boxing, right? We Com- should just... Hey, comment opportunity. Favorite celebrity boxing match. Yeah. Send him in. I want to hear him. There's not a lot to choose from because they only did two episodes and each episode had like uh, four bouts. Oh, yeah. No, three bouts. That was it. Damn. So, yeah, it's a it's a pretty small menu, but you know what? I want to hear him. <laughs> I want to hear what you people yeah. think. So, uh, you know, getting off topic here a little bit. Matt, your arms are coming out of that fucking shirt. What's, what's I, going on here? I have Even, a pug t-shirt. Yeah, I have this You're, this problem. Um, no, no, I'm not talking about the pug T-shirt. I love the pug T-shirt. <laughs> You're about to rip your sleeves. Like, well, I'm, I'm, uh, that's looking, what I'm going You're for. You're looking juiced as fuck, <laughs> man. Like, what are you taking? <laughs> well, <laughs> I um, well, number one, it's uh, it's honestly kind of an illusion because this fucking T-shirt, it's my favorite T-shirt. Sure. Here's the issue I run into. It's his favorite T-shirt because it really makes his buys look great. <laughs> Here's the issue I run into. Is that I go to get these fucking shirts, right? I don't like larges because larges fit me too big. They like kind of like hang off of me. We're, we're I both, like we're both about the same. We're similar sizes. Where like a medium is a little too tight yes. and small, and a large is almost like a little bit dressed. Exactly what I was gonna like, say. Yeah. If they had something between a medium and a large, I'm good. And there's certain it's like an extra medium. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's certain mediums that fit me like perfectly yeah. just the way I want. And then there's other mediums that are like tiny on me. And, uh, when I bought this t-shirt, whenever I buy dress t-shirts, I always buy the mediums. Cause whenever I get the larges, they're like fucking huge on me. Uh, and then the mediums will fit me perfect. Like, so around my chest and my waist, like right here fits me perfect. I I've, I've just been going, but, I've just been going with larges lately. Cause I can handle a shirt. That's a little bit too big over a shirt over that a makes shirt me look like small. I'm like trying to show off or something. Well, see, and that's like, the problem I'm running into because I'm, look, I'm also not in quite the shape to show off. <laughs> well, either. Like I had a little bit of pudge on me. Well, so. look down the middle, it fits me great, but yeah. on the arms, it's like fucking, it sucks, man. It's, it's and I actually, it I looks do, great, man. It looks like looks I like don't, you're about to <laughs> I don't like the arms on this. It looks like this you're about much. to turn fucking green and rip that thing off, dude. Well, I did know we were coming to LA today, so I was like, you get a little pump on LA, you know, to LA. Got to dress to impress, you know. Yeah. There might be some big movie executives down here. They'll Someone, see me walking down the street. Matt has uh quite, and they, <laughs> quite the ensemble going on. He's got his I have his, a watermelon uh, hat. Watermelon hat. It's a it is adorable it's my favorite it. hat i've ever owned well it's super funny because matt's very like well made up right now he's got like a, he's got his his pug shirt and his watermelon hat and he caught me he came early and caught me like in my fucking <laughs> yeah. my workout shorts and shit i'm like i i look like i just fucking rolled out of bed i'm like not ready to go but hey man you guys can't see us so go fuck yourselves exactly <laughs> no i was uh i wanted to go get uh a couple things done uh but it ended up being a lot harder to find places I could do this last minute. I wanted to get us some back and bone shirts so we oh. could take some pictures and stuff. And like, cause I'm tired of posting the logo when I, when I rep when I repost it, I want right. to post like Picture. pictures of us, yeah. like, you know, and, uh, get a, I want to get a little back and bone poster printed, but it like, it wouldn't have gotten done until two. Mm. Uh, so it wasn't really worth it to do that today. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm thinking uh, we're going to start merchandising. Let's do it. Yeah. So all you guys, listen up. If you want a Back and Bone shirt, there'll probably be some available soon. Back and Bone and posters, you, too. Yeah. And then uh, we can do a run of t-shirts where it's just me in my watermelon hat and my pug t-shirt. Uh-huh. 
with my on, eyes about to explode. T-shirt. It's a picture <laughs> of him on the t-shirt in his t-shirt. That's one thing I've actually learned um, because I've, I was just telling Ariana yesterday. I was like, okay, I need to kind of shy away from because I get like addicted to lifting weights. Or I just love. I, the, I think everybody does. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Is like I'm I'm in I'm in that limbo spot right now where like I'm I'm working out enough to stay in decent shape, but I'm not quite addicted to it yet. Right. But yeah, dude, everybody gets to that point where it's like you do it becomes habit. You do yeah. it so frequently that it's like ah, I don't feel right if I didn't work out today. Yes. Well, and what happens is is uh, that's actually part of the reason too why these goddamn sleeves are choking me. Um, I've noticed that by far my arms are like my fastest responders as far mm-hmm. as muscles go like they just grow yeah very easily whereas no other parts of my body will really do that and i end up looking like mm-hmm. a fucking gorilla yeah um i i i think mine are too that's a that's the thing that i notice has the most like when i start lifting that's the thing that i notice has the most uh, yeah i think definition so and response like you can always tell when you've been lifting because your arms definitely do thicken out mm-hmm. quite a bit yeah. I also, uh, I, I never neglect my cosmetic muscles. Those are always. <laughs> <laughs> well, but like, see, mine will grow. I don't even like, I haven't done a fucking bicep curl in you, years. You do full body stuff. You do yeah, I'll do full. I'll do. Yeah, exactly. That's going to address yeah. your biceps. But I, that's, that's what I mean, though. Like anything I do that involves my arms, whether it's any kind of pressing or pulling, my arms just grow instantly. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want to ask you guys out there. Let's shoot it back to you. What do you guys feel like your fastest growing body part is? And what do you think my fastest growing body part <laughs> and is? our fastest growing body? We're uh, gonna get the inevitable. You know, somebody's gonna comment gonna with my dick. dick. Yeah, my dick. My dick, man. My yeah. dick grows really fast. My dick man. grows immediately. <laughs> Takes no time at all. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I haven't been. Uh, I haven't been working out as much uh, lately. I've been. Uh, I've been working a lot. Mostly, like I've been. Well, as we as we talked about in earlier podcasts, just sort of exploring other hobbies and interests. I'm just trying to like uh, um, expand my my universe a little bit yeah. right now. I'm growing mushrooms. Yeah, you told yeah. I was gonna. Uh, I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, uh, they're in early phase right now. I have um, the what what happens is you you either get uh, uh, spores or you get. Um, or you get liquid cultures, and what I got was the liquid liquid cultures because it's, it's a faster process. It yields a, a better a better response, and uh, so I got these sterilized grains, and uh, you inoculate the sterilized grains with the liquid cultures. They 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 uh, cultivate, and, um, and they spawn in the bag. So once the bag is full of uh, Full of the uh, the or once the bag is fully inoculated, then you mix it with the fertilizer and everything, and the mushrooms start to grow. Mm-hmm. So I'm in the uh, I'm in the inoculation process. I'm about halfway through that right now. You know what I think is really interesting about mushrooms that I didn't realize until I don't know where I heard this, but that they're like not actually a vegetable. Or no, they're not. They're just yeah. a fungus. Yeah. You know? And that's the weirdest thing that you have. So technically, it's like you have vegetables, you know, poultry, yeah. dairy, grains, fungus. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, crazy. it's like a completely different life form. Yeah. It was like plants, yeah. fungus, animals. I love mushrooms, too. I, I eat mushrooms almost every day. I would I eat eggs. mushrooms anytime I could get my hands on them. <laughs> oh you mean no <laughs> yeah no no i uh i do like food mushrooms i fucking yeah. love food mushrooms they're fucking awesome these uh yeah let's just say these are food mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> i'm growing, food mushrooms, I'm growing some tasty shiitake um, mushrooms um you know what i hate more than anything uh so i'll like you know in the morning i'll cook breakfast for me and ariana and i will um I will, uh, I'll, you know, chop up a bunch of veggies to put in the omelet or just the scramble. And it'll be like mushrooms and all these herbs and vegetables. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't like mushrooms. And I'm like, you know what? Just eat the fucking mushrooms. You can't even, once they're in the omelet, you can't even taste them. They taste like nothing. I wish that they had more of a pronounced taste. Yeah. Like when I, when I cook shit into mushroom or when I cook mushrooms into, into like a stir fry or anything like that. It's so frustrating when I can barely taste them. Like, I intentionally 
I don't I don't slice my mushrooms. Like I break them up into big you like chunks. Them like whole. Because I yeah. yeah I I if they would cook better, I would eat them whole. Yeah. Uh, sautéed mushrooms, like one of my favorite things in the sauteed world. Sautéed mushrooms, my favorite thing ever that I've been doing a lot of lately. So I'll get like a steak, I'll sear it on both sides with salt and pepper, mm-hmm. and then I'll take some mushrooms, sauté those in some olive oil, some onion, and some mm-hmm. garlic, and just drape that over the top of the steak. That's basically <sighs> what my what I. That's basically my every meal. It's like the best yeah. thing ever. There's nothing like it. Yeah, I've been uh been living off sauteed veggies and um and uh grass-fed beef lately Mm -hmm. yeah and garlic do you guys have a grocery outlet up here we're getting one i'm so excited they always have really good like you know grass-fed well you know for cheap you know where i've been going is uh viarta viarta has uh 3.99 a pound for uh sirloin really yeah grass-fed sirloin and uh chuck roast is uh uh, other than that, everything else is like overpriced and shit. Yeah. But they have fucking grass fed beef for three ninety nine a pound. I'm like living on that shit. And until they realize that they can charge more, I'm just gonna keep buying just it. Do it. Yeah. Um Yeah, but there's that. Uh so there's the mushrooms. I've been uh been learning how to play guitar. Showing Matt a little bit of that earlier. So you showed me some tasty yeah. licks. I just dropped some tasty <laughs> licks on Mr. The Back. <laughs> And, uh, we're gonna. That's what actually the whole reason why we did this podcast today, I, guys. We're here to tell you we're gonna start a yeah, band. We're starting a band now. It's gonna be it's the back and duo. bone band. <laughs> <laughs> the back and bone band, triple yeah. B. We're gonna have uh, Matthew on the keys, and uh, mm-hmm. you you can learn how to play play keys, right? Kind of like yeah, when I say keys, sure. am I talking about a piano or am I talking about like a uh, I, like a kit? Where I wasn't sure. I was just agreeing I, with I'm you. Just, yeah. When you said it, I imagined myself with a synthesizer yeah, yeah, style like a synthesizer, keyboard and just kind of like that one right pressing there. Pressing it. Yeah. I don't know how to use that one. Yeah, nor but, do I. But yeah. I can learn. You yeah, know? we can. You know, we got then, it uh, there. Get started, man. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of music would we make? What style are we looking at oh, here? Oh man, it would definitely be uh, some sort of like mix between uh ccr and ice cube there we go I'm pretty yeah. sure it would be something I like that i think that's just like iced tea yeah probably right because <laughs> iced tea has some guitar he has a yeah. band body count yeah he so does he the, does that's basically that you just killer. described iced tea you're yeah. saying we're gonna be the next iced tea that was uh that was that song cop killer right yeah it was yeah, yeah body count um yeah we're gonna be the next ice well tea. little do you know <laughs> I've uh, I'm actually already an accomplished uh, musician in my own right. I've written a couple songs. Oh, do tell. Well, I uh, briefly, when I was 19 years old, I had a uh, R&B alter ego. My name was MC Weapon. Okay. Um, I did write a couple songs. I well, that's being a little generous. I wrote the choruses to a couple of songs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. I don't have. There was one song I wrote. And there's nothing wrong with that. A little chorus, <laughs> chorus action. Exactly. A hook, if you will. Yes. If we're, if we're talking hip hop. There was one song I wrote, um, earmuffs for the children out there, but it was called Pussy Right. Mm, and yeah. I just have the chorus, but it goes, "You don't care what you're looking like as long as they're pussy right." Yeah, girl. Yeah, 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 girl. You don't care what you're looking like as long as they're pussy tight. Yeah, girl. Yeah, 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 girl. It's okay. beautiful. I love it so much. Here's my second single. This one I think is even better than the first. This one called Don't You Understand. Girl, don't you understand if I'm coming in your mouth, I can't be your man. Girl, you know it's plain to see if I'm coming in your mouth, you can't be with me, yeah, girl. I love it. It's so smooth. And you know the melody of it. It's smooth. It's just something you don't like hear butter. in today's music. You know, people out there are just trying way too hard to 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 complicate keep it simple. the sounds just keep it simple sing keep about what you know sing sing about, keep it romantic yeah. that was my idea yeah i wanted to be a throwback like a usher yeah very now, very ushery my very final like, song that i wrote this one i did probably about a couple years back i don't have a name for this one yet it's untitled uh it goes a smack it, smack it, smack, smack. <laughs> i'm gonna make that ass clap i'm gonna bone you down real good Till I jizz in your butt crack. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's it. It's good. <laughs> uh, so you write the hooks. 
Who, I just who do the hooks. Who the verses? I haven't decided yet. Oh, okay. So um, we just got hooks. All right. Just hooks. I'll I'll get I'll get verses. We'll we'll start. Yeah. We'll, we'll, you know my 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 rap name is uh KC Masterpiece. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you have a rap persona too. Yeah. So yeah, KC Masterpiece and MC Weapon. Dude, I love hey, it. Isn't right? that funny <laughs> that both of uh both of our rap names have just two letters for the first. Yeah. So KC and MC. Yeah, KC and MC. Huh. <laughs> Well, uh, we act, that's another opportunity for audience interaction. We'd like to uh, gauge your guys' interest. Uh, you know, would you guys like to hear a fully fleshed out version? Because we could definitely, of, uh, like, we could do some conference software when we're not yeah. able to meet up and actually put some hours in yeah. in the studio here. And we could uh, we could record a, a real Shoot some real music track. videos. Yeah. Oh, God. Back to all music <laughs> videos. Oh, MC Weapon and KC Masterpiece. It's... <laughs> back in action we could be I like, like a uh, a full-blown multimedia conglomerate i got a produces I, everything i have a couple friends who actually like know how to produce music too like some audio engineers that we can actually do that with they would love it <laughs> that'd be awesome we should do it all right uh yeah let's get some responses on that i want to hear what you guys have to say about um about uh mc weapons uh hooks there and then uh yes we'll, don't be yeah. shy guys really uh give lay into me yeah give him give him the business i, I mean i know say. that the 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 uh the feedback is has to be positive because the music speaks for itself yeah, right but i mean it's too good not I'm, to receive I'm positive feedback here, you know the the feeling the emotion and i'm literally yes. breathing in matt's <laughs> condensation as we speak. If you guys don't know this is we're in a goddamn sweat box. <laughs> it is fucking. I have a I have a tissue on me, a Kleenex that I took. I took ice. I took fucking ice in my Kleenex, and I'm just blotting my arms. I'm blotting myself <laughs> with this ice. He's staring at me while he dabs himself <laughs> with the Kleenex. Pill. This is this this uh, this podcast is truly an exercise an exercise in mental strength. I think it's kind of cool. Like we're doing it like um, like classical surrealist artists, where they would subject themselves to inhumane conditions. Like this is, yeah. I haven't slept in thirty six hours, or I haven't eaten in six days, and now we're gonna see what we come up with. We're in a room that's one hundred and thirty six degrees right now. I don't know why all my examples ended in six, <laughs> <laughs> but they did. Uh, but yeah, it is that hot, and we're just like trying not to turn the air conditioner on because. We want to keep the we want to keep the audio pure for you guys, you know. Yeah. Want you to know, and and you know what? See what what comes out of the fire. Exactly. What's left? I'm throwing these on my ears. I've come to the conclusion that uh, works I, really well. I have ears. an ice cold water bottle on my dick right now, <laughs> and it's helping. It's it's yeah yeah. It's your heat center. Yeah, it is. So I they always poured water on GSP's dick. Mm-hmm. There was like a big question about that for a while. I everyone, do that. Yeah, everyone was yeah. wondering like, why is why is why is Greg Jackson dumping water on GSP's dick? He just wants to see his dick. He's all, let me have a look. How we doing is down Greg there? Greg Jackson did he corner GSP when he fought Bisping? Um, I don't think he did. I think he just no had no no. Thras. He's with he's with he had uh, Freddie yeah. Roach in there. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. GSP would just like. He would just like not really train with Greg Jackson year round. He would kind yeah. of just go there for a few weeks before his fight, and he would. Oh well, yeah, I get that. You know, it's a it's a it's a fight camp situation. You know, he's yeah. out there. Um, he's like everybody trains different in their fight camp. There's people who that you train year round. You train really seriously, and then you have a uh, fight camp where you've got to add something else to it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Uh, for for GSP, that that apparently was was going to train with greg jackson and the thing isn't the thing about greg jackson camp is it's not you don't go there for greg jackson right not that there's anything you wrong go there, no you, you go, go there, there the... because you're surrounded by killers yeah you have all these guys who are like top shelf and you are getting sparring and grappling in with guys who are going to make you ready for the hardest fight of your life every well, time apparently the uh work that gsp had been doing with freddie roach had paid off because uh landed that nice little what was it he landed on Bisping? Like a left, a left hook, right? Left hook, yeah. Believe yeah. it was a left hook. Yeah, that that looked solid. Um, got a little little flake on my face. Yeah, weird. It's hot. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry just if we keep to, talking about the heat, guys. Bring but, it back. Uh, well, it's like a, it, it's, it's it's literally it's like, remarkably I, hot. I, I think it's 102 degrees outside right now. Yeah. Um, in my room, in the studio, I should say, um, we don't have any windows or ventilation or anything. We are uh, we are completely closed in. This is in a this is an acoustic environment. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. We're weird. Yes, indeed. I don't know if it really is in a, an acoustic environment. I don't know what entails that we don't have any egg cartons on the walls or anything uh we should get some though wouldn't that be cool if we really yeah. decked this room out and made it a made it a studio yeah get some of those uh what are they called there's egg cartons and then what's the other fucking what are those things called the the spiky ones yeah the ones that are sharp um yeah. i don't know i don't know i don't i don't know what the, they're just foam foam uh shit i don't know the foam foam sheets foam mm-hmm. spikes foam i don't spikes. know what they do reverberate the sound yeah, i don't better. know what they do either they just look official they look super cool i've been looking at these ones that are uh they're they're just um microphone shields they just go around the mic mm-hmm. so we could just eat, each get one of those <laughs> and then we'll be looking at each other like from our little fortress <laughs> looking over the little the little uh like, <laughs> our little like fucking wall be like that'd be kind of cool i wonder what bats do over like, there little, like nerf guns yeah We'd have little uh, little fights here. Like Fort. I would get a little uh, mini, like a desk, a desk height catapult, and just like be launching, <laughs> launching little paper balls at Matt. The whole little time. slingshot. Yeah, that'd be. Do a lot kids of fun. still have slingshots? I think they have digital slingshots now on their phones. They probably just have slingshot apps where That's you point your true. phone at someone, and then their phone like just goes like, "Oh, I just got hit!" Like <laughs> fucking sling slingshots that had to have been like the most dangerous that wasn't it, that's kind of a trippy thing when you look Playing back with on slingshots it slingshots is what made me a man okay so many kids <laughs> had slingshots and fucking bb guns and remember when airsoft guns got really popular yes uh airsoft guns and then uh and then there was a lot of confusion between airsoft guns and pellet guns pellet guns were scary because they had those sharpened fucking pellets yeah okay. pellet guns were uh those were those were definitely scary. You didn't want to get well, shot by a pellet pe- gun. Pellet guns, it there wasn't a fucking nickel's worth of difference between a twenty two and a pellet gun. Like that, that was basically the same thing. It was just air powered. Uh, do you remember potato guns? Yeah, I remember pot- potato guns, potato cannons. Do people still have potato cannons? Dude, you can make one. We with the shit we have at this house, we could make a potato make a cannon potato right cannon. now. Yeah. There's there isn't. It's not a matter of if people have them. It's, are people is it popular for people to be doing that that's what i mean is it popular absolutely not what kind of person is out there building potato <laughs> cannons there's so much better stuff to do with your time even as a child like i uh we've got kids out there learning python right now and writing the programs that idiots like you and me are using <laughs> and that's how i know i grew up in a trashy environment <laughs> potato guns were around well i you know growing up around people like nick mccarr i learned about things like egg dangling when I don't know what egg dangling is. Oh, dude, egg dangling is great. It's uh, <laughs> take some fishing line, okay? Mm-hmm. Tie it to a tree. You run that. Uh, you run that line about halfway across the street. You wrap it around an egg, enough times that the egg will hold. Mm-hmm. Take it to the other side of the street. And you want this to be about windshield height. So uh, car drives right. by. They're just like I see where this is going. There's a little white thing that, and then pop, and they're like. This sounds like too much work, though. I would oh, rather man. just throw the egg. We Nick, used to throw eggs yeah. at cars. Yeah, but it's so much funnier for the car to be like, you know that guy's like, huh, what's that? <laughs> I don't think kids even do that anymore. Kids don't throw eggs at cars anymore. What kind of dirty piece of shit kid is throwing eggs at cars? If I if I was a grown man and sure. someone like Nick McCarr egg dangled me, I'd get out of the car, <laughs> I'd start to chase him, then I'd get back in my car before that animal beat the shit out of me. Per- perspectives <laughs> certainly do change because, yeah. Uh, yeah, when we were kids, egging a car was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, not uncommon, but now, like, if I if I found out my nephew was egging cars, I'd be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, you kill somebody. Yeah, you kill somebody, <laughs> moron. <laughs> what if that car gets into a wreck and it's your fault? Yeah, it's yeah. true. It's a real thing you have to worry about. Fucking TP into kids still TP. I think kids still TP a little bit here and there. Sure, pretty innocent. Yeah, I, mean, I, I I can't remember the last time I saw a house get TP. You know what is gonna be a big um big thing with this uh i see cameras and shit on houses more and more all the time cameras are becoming so commonplace so easy to put up that like pranks are just not going to be happening happening anymore everything is recorded that's a sad world prank free world oh yeah 
We're we're living in like equilibrium and shit. We're like, well, you know, you know what, what'll happen is we'll have like next level pranksters. We'll have kids that are like, hacking. you know, they've got stealth. No, and, like, we're, gonna, we're gonna get kids that are like hacking the the cameras and stuff. I mean, and, like, yeah, they're gonna have like they're gonna have a team of pranksters. Yeah. One of them is gonna be the tech guy. And you're gonna have like the Tom Cruise, like the the action yeah, dude. He goes in there. He actually does the prank, hanging from wires and shit. Yeah, yeah. And then you're always gonna have the getaway driver. So it's gonna be at least a three person. At team. least a three man team. Future pranksters out yeah. there. Keep it in mind, pranksters. I want to know <laughs> that you guys are out there doing this. All right. I want to know that pranksters are are keeping it real. That that would be a funny uh, topic for the audience to. Uh, maybe send to us is uh some of the funnier pranks that they were involved in yeah yeah give us some pranks we'll read them on the air if you guys give us good pranks like good prank stories we'll read them on the air for yeah. the next one for sure i'm so down to do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. see any uh any 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 good movies lately let's talk about deadpool 2 i know we both saw that yeah let's talk, I, I got i got some shit to say about that off the gate what's your what's your first immediate impression of deadpool 2 I liked it. Me too. Um, I really liked it. I liked it better than the first one. It was kind of just like a bigger, juicier version of the first one, I thought. I liked it. I liked things about it more than the first one. There there was content in it that I that I wanted in the first one that I that I got in the second one. Yeah. There was shit that I didn't like about it too though. That mm-hmm. like was strongly um dissatisfactory to mm-hmm. me. Like it, it kinda like put a bad taste in my mouth. A lot what, of times. What was it you didn't like? So, <clears throat> they uh, they redid jokes a lot from the first one. Yeah, they but did. But they really pushed them. Like, they were yeah. like, this was funny the first time. Let's some just of, do that again. De- there was definitely some uh, stale yeah. uh, there, shit. There's there. a lot of stale comedy in it. Uh, they really overdid it with the uh, dramatic uh, late 80s love songs during the, <laughs> during the action yeah. scenes. That was... Um, it's like if you do that once, that, it's funny. That was but... funny one time. Yeah, it's not funny in every fight scene, and I feel like it was. Um, it was. It was. Uh, it it took away from scenes that like. Thing about Deadpool is Deadpool's funny. It's all comedy all the time, but he's also badass. Like, yeah, that's what makes it like you know. Yeah, they didn't. That's like, one thing. That's one complaint I have about the movie, is that they. They just make it. It's basically a pure comedy. Yeah, right, right. It, it went from like being, they don't give yeah. you any badassness yeah. to that character. They also killed off the whole X Force. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that was funny though. Yeah, the that way was they super did it. fun. Spoiler like alert, it. guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, spoiler. Well, alert. that was another thing. Okay, so that kind of segues into something that I really liked about the movie. Yeah, is that was probably like one of the most meta. Like there was, there were some deep cuts in that movie for yeah. characters. Like they had, I was, I was, I actually when I wrote the review on Deadpool two, the review as if it's the only the one. when review. I wrote the Deadpool. 2 when review. I wrote the official Deadpool <laughs> review for uh, Matt Reviews Media, um, so they had um, they had Zeitgeist in there, who's like mm-hmm. a super. He's the guy who had the the yeah mask the, on. the yeah uh, yeah the acid. It's like a guy. super obscure yeah. character from X Force, who actually is from. Mike Allred's X Force, which came later on, and is like, that's one of my favorite comics ever. I actually reviewed that too on Matt Reviews oh, Media, really? and I didn't know that character was going to be in the movie. They had a Shatterstar in there, who's like See, fairly obscure. Yeah, Shatterstar um, was. I was like vaguely familiar with Shatterstar, but I don't know. Like I've heard that before, but I don't know any. Like I've never seen Shatterstar. He was before. from a. Uh, he's like an alien. He's from yeah. like an alien race, and he's like an expert in all kinds of fighting. I think he's from Mojo World in the uh, in the comics. Okay. Um, he ends up being gay later on, later in the comics. I think he was like one of the they, first. They touched on that with yeah. uh, his overall look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They gave him a pretty distinctly gay look. Yeah. Um, who else? Terry Crews. Like, yeah, Terry yeah. Crews was yeah. Bedlam. That was great, dude. Yes, that was funny. Um, I, I my favorite. I want to talk about this. Yeah. I, I want to be the one to say this because I'm vain. No, I actually just really enjoyed this so much. Um, my favorite was the Vanishing Man. I thought the way that yeah, they that was the way that they did that. The way that they did that. Yeah, the way. Oh Brad. wow, pretty good. And it He's ended like, up being yeah. Brad Pitt. That was what I was gonna say. You piece of shit. Ah! You me off. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited to mention that for one second of the movie, 
less than a second. I think it was actually like a half second of runtime. Brad Pitt was in the movie as the Vanishing Man. <laughs> Did you know that Matt Damon was in it too? Yeah, uh, Matt Damon. Which one? I. He played one of those little like there was that scene where there was those two like cowboy dudes who are like sitting out by their truck having a beer when Cable walks up. Oh, he was one of them. He was one of those. Yeah, that he had a bunch of makeup so on funny. and shit. I think yeah. about it every time I take a shit. That, that was one thing they did a really good job of integrating Cable into yeah. that goofy Cable universe. Cable was great. Yeah, Cable, uh, Cable was awesome. Cable was one of my one of the things I was talking about that I was really like I I wanted in the first Deadpool. Mm hmm. Because Cable, Cable and uh, Deadpool have a lot of relationship. Yeah. And it's very fun to me. They because, go hand in hand in the yeah, comics. It's it's very fun to me because they're such different characters. Cable's so serious and intense and really, like, aggressive. And yeah. Deadpool is just making light of the most serious things. Yeah, they, <laughs> like, well, they put them together. They did, I think it was back in 2001 or 2002. Mm -hmm. um, this guy, it was a, who was it that did that run? Fabian Netsia, was it Fabian Netsia who did the Cable Deadpool run? I don't remember, but it was a comic book run that they did, and um, that was when they first teamed them up, and they they did a really good uh, comic out of it. Did you know that uh, uh, Deadpool uh, was a herald of Galactus for a period of time? Really? And he got fired. <laughs> he just no, was like not that. taking the job seriously and he was using it to like hook up with chicks and stuff and, like, and galactus like was space like, women what the hell are you doing <laughs> yeah that was basically deadpool it. herald of galactus yeah um and then there was something else i'm forgetting that i really enjoyed. oh there was one scene in that movie that had me laughing harder than probably any other scene in any movie of the last few years the scene where at, after Deadpool gets his legs chopped off and he has to grow his baby legs back, uh, I couldn't stop laughing. I was really? like, my stomach was hurting. Yeah, I was the, laughing um, so hard. When he got up off the couch and TJ Miller was like, oh, look at him. He's doing it. He's, he's going. <laughs> and like when he's just sitting on the couch and he's crossing his yeah, legs. And it's it's like, the, um, what is that movie called? Or, uh, shit, I can't think of it. It reminded me of the reason. I don't know why I thought Basic that was, Instinct. Yeah. Yeah, the basic instinct. Legs. Right? Yeah. But I just don't know why the visual of Ryan Reynolds with little baby legs, it just it reminded me of like a '90s throwback, like like a '90s like puppetry, yeah, or something, or like '80s. I don't know. It's just I fucking was it, dying. it had kind of a feel there, uh, even though they were they were CGI. It kind of had yeah. that little like this is too ridiculous to be a real thing. Yeah. Feel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That that just um, killed me. It was super funny. I loved, uh, I loved, um, what's her name? The, the Asian girl. Which, oh, uh, she Yukio. Was, Yukio, she was Yukio. so funny, just not serious. Yeah. And it's all, hey, Yukio, hey, Wade. I, <laughs> I like, I love how they did Domino's powers, how they showed them on screen. Mm -hmm. I love how they did her character and everything. I just didn't like the look. You didn't like the look? No. I don't, I don't I don't remember Domino too clearly. They the just comics. gave her the one. Remember, like, well, in the comics, I, she has white, like pale with yeah. like complete, like white as a Kleenex skin. Okay. With one dark circle over her eye, and then in the movie, she just had her normal skin, and then she had like a vaguely. Like, well, that's a big that's a big flip because she was a black girl in the movie. Yeah. So she they go from being somebody who's characterized their look is characterized by being pale, and. Uh, they should have just made her like an albino black girl. Yeah, they could have done that. That would have been cool. She still would have been hot if she was albino. Yeah. But they yeah. uh they didn't want to play that game. Yeah, it was a know. solid movie though. I would uh you know, there there's definitely some flaws in it. They yeah. they definitely overused quite a few jokes, but uh overall it was um it, well one thing I will say is that it gets me really really excited for a potential X-Force movie. Right. Yeah, um, but the, pro the here's the hard thing though is like they, when you have they just killed off the X Force. Well, yeah, they killed <laughs> off the X Force. But here's the other hard thing is that when you have a character like Deadpool, who kind of the way that they've done Deadpool in these movies, the whole thing, his whole environment, and the way they portray this character kind of dominates the environment. You know what I mean? Right. Like you can't have Deadpool exist outside of that Deadpool universe that he is it, in. Because it, it 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 ruptures every other universe. Exactly. Even if he's not necessarily the focal point, it takes the seriousness away from everything yeah. else that everybody else yeah. is looking so at. Yeah, so it's like if you try to segue into a different 
style of movie yeah. or unless they just plan on making X Force a full blown comedy too, then Right. Um you I couldn't yeah, you couldn't have that breaking of the fourth wall without the breaking of the fourth wall kind of being the point. Yeah. 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 Um, but then again though, it might be kind of a nice opportunity for them to maybe fix some of those potential issues that we didn't enjoy where they made Deadpool too goofy and maybe they take them and they insert them into this world where they tone it down yeah, a little bit like maybe it would be a better deadpool movie but not necessarily a better maybe serious movie yeah <laughs> yeah i could see that well but and just yeah. think too what if um because it looks like from what i'm hearing marvel or disney rather is pretty close to acquiring fox so we might be looking at some marvel we were talking about that yeah. before weren't we um yeah. But it's like, apparently it's like on the verge of happening now. Okay. Yeah. So Fox owns the X-Men. Yeah. Or part they of own, the X-Men. They own, no, they own anything. Every, anything anything X-Men related, related to X-Men. Okay. Yeah. All they right. own anything related to X-Men and Fantastic Four. Okay. Which sucks because most of Marvel's, in my opinion, most of Marvel's best characters are in... I love the X-Men characters. Yeah, yeah. Those are my X- favorite well, Marvel X-Men characters. Is, it, the X Men universe is huge. Yes. There's so many so characters in most there. Most of my favorite characters exist in there, and yeah. I would be super stoked. My favorite villain exists, uh, my favorite Marvel villain, rather, exists in the Fantastic Four universe, and that's Doctor Doom. And I Doctor would Doom's love to see what yeah. Marvel would do with Doctor Doom, because they would do it right. Yeah. They would give you, like, the real Doctor Doom, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real Doctor Doom. You think they did really like? I I I, don't, I I was never that into Fantastic Four. Uh, how bad was uh, the, the like, movies? How, no, the movie sucked. Yeah, but I mean, how, how specifically bad was uh, was their Doctor Doom to you in both of them? Uh, uh, they were really fucking horrible. Sure, but I like, mean, what, what was it that was wrong with them? Because I, I remember bland. Doctor Doom. He from was the just ca- bland. Yeah. He was like he was almost like a generic. Like I didn't see the most recent Fantastic Four, but I heard it was even worse than the first oh, one. It 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 wasn't. Uh, no. it, it got hated on super hard, and it wasn't really good. But it it I think everybody just expected more from it, and they were disappointed. It wasn't that bad. In though. both cases, okay. In the first movie, they make Doctor Doom like a scientist or some yeah. shit. Who fucking he gets something happens in an accident, and then he becomes Doctor Doom. Right. And then I think that's kind of more or less. You would have to tell me, but I think that's kind of more or less what they did with the second one. Like more, he yeah, just, they basically there's an did, accident yeah. that happens, and he becomes like in the comics. And, you know, Doctor Doom. Oh, he's like the leader of his own country. He's like mm-hmm. a he's like a Black Panther. You know, he's his own. He he runs Liberia. Yeah, he's his, he's own his own thing. person. Like, yeah. yeah. So it, it, they sort of did like something in between that. Yeah. Uh, for the second one. So what they okay. did was uh, he was a doctor with um, with the with the crew that was building this interdimensional travel device he gets trapped in the other universe and um he becomes like the living he he becomes like the only sentient living creature in that universe he gets trapped there everybody else comes home he's there forever becomes like integrated with it and it becomes like his home and then he like gets the metal skin and everything and um and he so it's that, good, that's it's good. It's kind of like they tried to do it a yeah, little better. Yeah, exactly. Like he yeah, didn't but... he didn't have like a country that he led, but he was like he his whole villainy was based on him trying to protect that right. dimension. That was like that's my home. Right. You are the invaders, and that was like so. It's almost like they were touching on that, but they still they wanted were nodding to... to it. Yeah. Yeah. He well, and then what I would love to see that Marvel would do perfectly, I think, is showing his powers right because dr doom always had this really cool mix of like it's like techno organic you know he had this mix of uh, like actual technological advancements with like mystical powers so he was almost like a mix of you know fucking dr strange and uh iron man you know he was like this weird kind of that's cool yeah. character so i just feel like marvel could do that's, something so cool with that that's the thing is like not not being that not being that familiarized with dr doom whenever i think of his powers all i really think of is uh metal face and like purple lasers 
Yeah. That's about all I got. Well, and he like, but I feel like that's another thing too. I love, that's that's part of the reason why I love Dr. Doom is just the aesthetic of that mm-hmm. character. He's a very cool looking So character. cool looking. He's, like, And I feel like Marvel would just yeah. take that and put it he's, on screen. He's like then, a metal Robin Hood. I love it. He's, yeah. He's got his green yes. cloak. Yeah. And hood. You should give that guy a bow and arrow just for the look. <laughs> they great. Toss him a bow and arrow. Yeah. They should have a scene where he fucking stomps out Hawkeye and just takes his bow and arrow. I feel like that's probably happened at some point. Yeah, right? It's, it's got to be out there somewhere. They always There's this really cool cover from the comics that I loved. It was one, it was from Secret Wars. It's one of my favorite ones ever. Um, I should have been drinking out of my Secret, Secret Wars Secret coffee Wars mug. Secret Wars coffee. Um, yeah. And it was like this scene this where... It's been really appropriate right now. <laughs> Dr. Doom, he, uh, he... There's this character named the Beyonder... Yeah, and, the Beyonder uh, is yeah. dope, dude. He's this, super weird. There's this badass fucking. There's this, such a, this badass cover where him and uh, the Beyonder and Doctor Doom have this big like showdown fight, and Doctor Doom kills him, and he like absorbs his powers. Really? Yeah. I never read that, but I've seen that cover. Yeah. How? It's is where it? he's like this, and he's all tattered, yeah. and his armor's falling off. How is it even possible that Doctor Doom could kill the Beyonder? The Doctor Beyonder's Doom, like well, basically a god. Doctor Doom is a really powerful character in the comics. Yeah, but more like, so than people realize. I get that. But the Beyonder is, like, omnipotent. He can, like, do anything. But Doctor Doom, I, I don't remember what it was specifically. It's been a really long time since I read this thing. But um, one of Doctor Doom's abilities is, like, he can absorb mm. other people's. So right. I think when he kills so the Beyonder, of, he absorbs his powers. Right. And, so it's sort of like one of those things where it's like, you being more powerful than me made me more powerful. Yeah. So I'm powerful enough to contain. All right, exactly. Okay. All right. My power counteracts your power. Yeah. That makes sense. That's cool. So the Beyonder died. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that. Beyonder's yeah. a cool character, though. Yeah. You guys should uh, read up on him. He's super weird. He's like one of those characters is like, he's so powerful and so uh, cosmic uh, that his, like, I guess what would be considered more or less his weakness as a character is his disinterest in the affairs of humans. Yeah. It's like, the shit, good and evil doesn't even matter to him. No. It's like, do you care if two ants are fighting? Like, it has nothing had, to do with you. They had you. the Beyonder in a, uh, the Spider-Man cartoon. Yeah. And he had kind of a funny look. He even has a funny look in the comics, actually. Well, he, he just, changes he his look just, sometimes. Like, yeah, but in the Secret Wars, I think he just has, like, a Jufro. And he oh, wears, yeah. like, a silver, like, jumpsuit of sorts. Yeah. Well, um, the, the silver jumpsuit is his, is his signature. Yeah. And it has, like, a deep V. Yeah, like a yeah. Deep, super deep. He's just V-neck. ridiculous looking. Um, super ridiculous character. Well, he was a, he was invented in the seventies, wasn't he? Uh, whenever I, th- I think he's eighties, maybe. Eighties, maybe is it? I don't know. Actually, I, I think I've seen some I'll old pictures of him. Check that. I think he's. 70s. I think he might be right. Actually, probably. Uh, and he kind of has that that seventies, you know, jumpsuit look. Um, but uh. Was I gonna say? Yeah, there's like one comic where he just strolls up in the room as a woman, and everyone's like, "Uh, <laughs> what are you like, doing? What, yeah, like, what's going on?" And he's all, "Oh, I'm just trying out this form right now." Because he could just do whatever he wants. He could like he, bend reality. He first appeared in Secret Wars, uh, number one, on in May 1984. Oh, fuck you then, Matt. Knowing everything. Hey, hey, hey. Whatever. All right. Uh expand on this i'll be right back i'm gonna grab some more coffee he uh for those of you guys that don't know um i'm dying right now i am fucking literally leaking like a faucet (laughs) (laughs) i don't know how much longer i'm gonna make it um so the beyonder is an infinite dimensional entity um he was originally portrayed as the most powerful being in the marvel universe um, and he is the be-all, end-all of the beyond realm that took human form to better understand the nature of human beings. Which kind of goes back to what Keith said about the beyonder kind of being, you know, um, beyond normal human affairs. So that kind of makes sense that he would want to, uh, you know, have a better understanding of that. Um, pretty cool character, though. Wouldn't really surprise me if you guys see uh, him start popping up in some some Marvel movies and stuff like that if they're able to uh, get to, to get the rights to some of these characters. I think they might already have the rights to him though because uh, because he uh, I don't know, he's not part of the Fantastic Four or the X Men I don't think so. But it's a really cool character. 
um, you guys should look into it if you have not seen it. Um, maybe even read uh, the Secret Wars comics because they're actually really, really good. Um, now that the uh, Infinity War just ended and they're going to do the next uh, Avengers 4 next year, which will be the sequel to Infinity War, maybe the Secret Wars will kind of be the next big thing that the Marvel Universe builds up to. And then you only have to wait another you know, 10 years or so before that comes along, and by then I will be almost 40. Fuck. Um, so, yeah, that's some, that's some long-term booking on Marvel's part right there. Um, Keith went to go get coffee? I don't know what he went to go do, but I'm sitting in this room, and it's got to be 120 degrees in here. I am dying. My arms are just dripping with sweat, as is my head and my armpits and my shoulders. Basically everything on my body. Keith got some bags. Yeah, just keep talking to the people on the... <laughs> Keith got some bags, so we're going to throw some ice in these bags and then put them on our bodies. Yeah. Um, because it's fucking I hot. I knew you would know exactly what these bags were for. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Yep. I can't play around right now. I got hot coffee in here. I can't drink coffee any other way. I, I, it's just me. It's, it's a fault in my character. Uh, cause when it's really hot and I still want coffee, there's nothing I can do about it. I just gotta, just gotta heat up. So, I mean, a little bag of ice on my genitals or neck. I haven't decided yet. Let's see which one one does me better. <laughs> Which brings us to our next uh, audience question. How do you guys feel about hot weather? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Oh, God, that's amazing. <sighs> Both of us did the side. The same side. This, is, this is rough. This is rough. This is super funny. I want to know how this is affecting the, uh, the audience... Curious. Right now, our yes. responses to the heat. This is uh, this is like, cause we're we're just really being legit about this. It's so hot in this room. How far in are we? Uh, we are almost to two hours. We're at uh, one forty nine. Okay, so we're making good time. Oh yeah, I think it's going real smooth. Um, whew. Uh, how long till uh, your ride comes back? I don't know. I don't know what she's doing. My okay. wife went to go. She's exploring she L.A. right now. Yeah, she, she said she wanted to get her nails done. Um, but the thing is, I don't like when she gets her nails done, so I told her not to. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know what? A man's, <laughs> a man's got to tell his woman when she can and can't get her nails done. Otherwise, she'd be getting her nails done all the goddamn time. All right, Matt? I'm just a total weirdo yeah. who doesn't like my wife getting her nails done. <laughs> um, you know what? I think you've got the problem. What else do we need to talk about? I feel like there's other things we need to talk about. Jeez. Uh, so, um, I know this is a little bit outside of our, our usual scope, but I've uh, been playing around on some, some video games lately. Mm -hmm. And this one's a little bit old. This is a little bit old, mostly, like, if you haven't heard about this, uh, you're, behind, you're behind the times. I was. But uh, I recently played through the game The Last of Us. Have you heard of that, Matt? Um, No. All right, so The Last of Us, the only reason why I'm really bringing it up is just because uh, as, a, as an overall media and storytelling experience, it was one of the more profound ones that I've gone through mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the past year, I would say. Um, it's an absolutely uh, beautiful and rewarding humanistic experience, which is a weird thing to say about a video game, but it was. It was uh, kind of a... Um, it was like a zombie story, or it was like a zombie thing, but uh, it's it's very dramatic, mm -hmm. but done in a tasteful way. It wasn't like overblown drama. Like it it starts you you're following this guy named Joel, and uh, he's like trying to protect his daughter when the outbreak happens, and uh, she ends up getting like murdered by some guy who's like trying to survive, mm -hmm. while the zombies are like ripping people apart. Um, they do a really clever twist on it where the place that the zombies come from 
is a mutated strain of cordyceps mushrooms that affects people. Mm-hmm. You know how wow. the, the cordyceps yeah, mushroom, yeah, how it does with ants and, yeah. and uh, what is it, ants and caterpillars? Yeah. So this one, this one infects people, and they become these fucking, like, zombies. Uh, for those of you who don't know what cordyceps mushrooms are, it's super fascinating. Uh, look it up. It, uh, the first time I saw it was on planet Earth, and it blew my fucking mind. It's a, a lot of endurance athletes use them. Right, but what they what they do to what they do in like the animal kingdom mm-hmm. is uh, the the spore um, would come into contact with say like an ant or something. This ant would start acting strangely, and it would start trying to it would start trying with like all all of its um, ability to get to the highest point near its colony that it can, and once it got there it would just kind of shut down and die. Uh, and then a big fucking uh, fungus would start growing out of its head. <clears throat> and this fungus would grow out like a, like a horn. And then it would just kind of burst, and the spores would go everywhere. And Whoa. That, you don't you don't know about that? No. Oh, dude, I thought you knew what I was talking about. No. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, so the then it would it would be like an antenna, like that's what the thing was, and it would just burst, and the spores would go everywhere, and um, you you've got to look it up. That's dude. really it's disgusting. That sounds yeah. like something out of Alien. Dude, it is. It is just like that. It's and that's what the cordyceps mushrooms are that you're eating. Like they they're infected uh, caterpillars. Wow. That's where they they harvest them from. So that's the uh, that's the concept of this game is these people these are people who are infected with the human strain of cordyceps. Wow. And uh, they just turn into zombies and start fucking each other up. Super interesting idea. Like I I'm surprised they haven't done a movie of it, but like as a overall like uh, then the actual gameplay of it takes place like 20 years after that happens, after like the world has fallen to ruins from that shit. There's all these factions of people um if you're not even a gamer, if you're just like a movie fan, or if you like very beautiful, beautiful storytelling, you should definitely play through that game once in your life. It's not super hard. It's very, it's very playable. It's more for the experience than it is for the actual gameplay. Well, that's a perfect segue because I'm not really a big video gamer myself, but I had the chance a few weeks ago for the first time to experience VR. Oh, dude. Have you done it before? Like like legit VR or yeah. like those shitty like twenty dollar ones you buy no. at Walmart? No. You legit did? VR. Dude, I haven't yet. I fucking want to. Y- it will change your life. Yeah. I love Ready Player One. Unfucking believable. For those of you guys out there who haven't done VR and you live maybe those of you who live on the central coast, there's a place in Solvang. It's one of a dozen places in the United States. It's called Space VR. Dude. You put this headset on, you go into a different world. It's Fuck, crazy. Yeah. You look at your hands, they're digital hands. I played so many different games, dude. I did one where I was a samurai on a burning ship, and they gave me swords, axes that I could chuck at people's head, Yeah. bow and arrows. When you draw this bow back, you have these two controllers, and then when you go to draw the bow back, the controller will click, so it's like the sound. it feels <laughs> like you're holding a bow. Me and Ariana and two of our friends went. Most fun I've had in a long time. Like, we went for an hour. It's 35 bucks for an hour. Oh, yeah. Takes you to a different world. I walked with dinosaurs. Ariana did this lame, like, mystery room thing where she's locked in a room and she has to discover oh, dude, clues you just to get out. escape rooms anywhere. You don't need VR Exactly. That. <laughs> that's what I said. That's, that's why they all did the escape room. I'm like, why are you guys doing the escape room? You can go to an escape room and escape the room. They have those. They got those. We, we could go, go to those one in real probably life. next door. Exactly. Um, however, you only get one chance to walk with dinosaurs like I did. Yeah. You only get one or chance. You spend another 35 bucks and then you could <laughs> exactly. walk with dinosaurs that time. You only get one chance to kill samurais. Uh, I mowed through hundreds of samurais. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was the other game I played? Oh, I did this one where I was in space, me. dude. Yeah. I'm floating in the, middle of the spa- in the middle of space shooting asteroids and shit. Okay. It is... It's like classic asteroid, but just so way much more fun. intense. It's gnarly. It's so much fun. You have to do it. 
They even had a Batman. They had a Batman Arkham Asylum game, but I didn't get to play it. Yeah, they have that uh, for the PlayStation uh, VR. I really want to get that. I have the PS4. It looks like it's really good. I think it's a. I think it's like really advanced VR. I had this one dude tell me about. Uh, I picked up this guy uh, driving Uber who he he worked for Amazon, and they said like he was here for the E3 convention or E4. Which one is it? I think it's E3. I think it's E3. Uh, two guys who are not gamers talking about games right now. So, like, <laughs> but I picked up this dude, and he was uh, he was saying that like he was there for that conference because he he worked in. Um, he worked for Amazon, and they they let him test all the the PlayStation VR games, and so he played the Resident Evil one, and he was telling me he was like, it was so intense and so real and so fucking scary that there were parts that he's like, I've already been through this part, and I don't want to go in there again. I don't want to open the door because there's no one's back there. Yeah, right? I've heard the, the I've heard about that Resident Evil one, and I've heard it's yeah. fucking gnarly. Yeah. That's a that's a story, dude. Like, I guess those fucking I guess that PlayStation VR is super good, but it's like it costs as much as buying a whole other PlayStation right. Four. It's like I can't just drop three hundred bucks for an addition to my fucking PlayStation. You know what, though, man? If you go and do this VR, you might change your mind. I'm telling you, I if it's if it's as good as the one that you you did, though, I don't know. Yeah. What it is. Well, I don't know what this one was exactly. Was it the um, the HTC Vive? I have no clue. I th- might have been. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure though. All I know is I just put on a big old headset and I was like, oh, so it was gone. like it was like a full blown like big headset, or was it just like the eye covers with the ears? It was eye covers with ears, I think. Right. Well, that's it wrapped. How, I'm pretty sure it wrapped around my whole head. I'm not sure. So that's, that's how most. It was like a helmet. Yeah, I think. Fuck. I don't know. I have a picture of it. That would be that would be pretty intense if it was like a full like head cover thing. So you got like peripherals and stuff. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I don't even remember to be honest. Well, I was watching Ready Player One and I was like, I'm down. Let's get in the Oasis. Let's make this happen. Oh yeah, that. Um... I remember you told me about it. You told me I should watch it and I checked yeah. it out and I, I did. did. I you... loved everything about it. It wasn't it awesome. It was. It was just like. It had that whole like um, it had that whole that whole media culture that we grew up with. Exactly, uh, it was like that movie was literally made it, for somebody our age. Yeah, with the combination of the futuristic style and everything that yeah uh, that it that it was made in. Again, near future dystopia. Yeah, actually, exactly. it wasn't that near future. It wasn't it was like a thousand years from now or something? Or no? Like no, I think it was years. like a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Here, here's what I that, guess that still qualifies like. as near future. Okay, so that's like that looks pretty similar to what the uh, the PlayStation VR looks like, but I don't know what that symbol is on it. It's like a blue triangle. If anybody yeah. knows what the blue triangle is, let us know. Somebody out there is knows. some somebody who knows is like you fucking idiots. Yeah, if we have enough people fucking listening. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a not so thinly veiled insult to all you assholes who won't tune in yeah seriously come on guys i got like 700 friends on facebook or something i got like maybe maybe like 50 views per per episode let's get it together guys come on now guys what good are, what good are all these facebook friends if they won't even like or repost your work well i'll tell you what you you guys aren't my friends you aren't any friend of mine if you're not willing to like my podcast if you aren't hearing this right now Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you are hearing this, I love you. All right? Yes. Thank you for being here. Yes. That actually reminds me, I know that I, I was going to save this for uh, the end. We got our first uh, our first patron response. Uh, we got our first pledge, 10 bucks a month from Freckles. Thank you, Freckles. Thanks, Freckles. We love you. I wonder who Freckles is. I think it's my friend Erica. Oh, okay. Thanks, Erica. Yeah, if, if that, if is, that you. is you. I think, it, I think it's Erica, but... You know, I don't know that for a fact. So if it's not Erica, thanks anyway, Erica, because I know you're listening. And you're yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if uh, if Freckles is not Erica, thank you, Freckles. You're an individual, and we love you. How about this? Anybody who wants to uh, pledge to our Patreon page in the future, I will take you on a steak dinner uh, while pretending to be Christopher Walken. 
Or Matthew McConaughey. Or Matthew McConaughey. Whichever you prefer. If you choose Matthew McConaughey, he's not going to wear a shirt for the steak dinner, though. I won't wear a shirt. Um, what would I say if I was Matthew McConaughey at a steak dinner? <laughs> All right, man. What do you want? You want to get some enchiladas, man? You want to have a little steak? We're going to cook it up. All right, man. Sounds good. And then if I did... Uh... Like, but I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> hey, Matthew. man. I say, man, that's cool. We could just cook up some chili, throw some cheese in them, man. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Do vegetarians eat cheese? Vegans no. do not eat cheese. Vegans vegetarians don't eat cheese. Do, though. Vegetarians yeah. still have uh, animal byproducts. And if I was... It could be Chris walking at dinner. Well, not a... I can't do... Uh, man, I'm choking. You I can't gotta, do Chris You gotta like, open it up a little bit. Get your, get your scope. What would Chris Walken say if he was ordering a steak dinner? I, I want to order a steak dinner right now. Oh, top sirloin. <laughs> sirloin. Yeah. Oh, Bloody. Sauce. A1. Please. <laughs> right now. Oh, uh, yeah. That's good. I think we are... Uh... We have ice bags on our neck. Yeah, we're we're going we, off. We look like two. If you guys can see us right now, we look like two. <laughs> we look like we're in like <laughs> machines we like, that have we, rapidly broken down. No, we look like a scene on like a spy movie where two yeah. guys are in like Thailand or something. We're planning some sort of like covert mission. <laughs> this is like a real <laughs> life. This is like the scene in Ace Ventura: Pet Detective Part <laughs> Two where he's trapped in the rhino. Yeah. And he starts sweating, and he has to escape through the rhino's ass. <laughs> this is like that. Oh, man. Truly. It's it's almost humiliating, but it's only us I'm, here. I'm really impressed, actually, because we've, what, we're like two hours, ten minutes yeah. in. And we haven't fucking touched I'm, I'm impressed that we have, we've resisted the urge to touch the air con conditioner, and I'm also impressed that we've, like, made it this long. Yeah, without passing out. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm cutting weight right now. This yeah. is so bad. It is very reminiscent <laughs> of that feeling. Yeah. Well, what do you think, Matt? Let let's. I need that air conditioner. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, hey guys. I know you guys wanted more, but my body can only give so much. It's true. I'm. I'm actually. Uh, I came to this really unprepared. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. I disagree. I think you were pretty well prepared. You had a cooler full of ice. No, no, I, I mean, was. That's I, like. I was prepared uh, physically. I, I didn't really come with a lot of material today. Like uh, usually, I'm taking notes uh, yeah. throughout the weeks and stuff, making sure I have a lot of material to talk about. But um, I uh, I was very uh, very excited to to put down some more some more time on the Back and Bone Show, and I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Check Indeed. out our Patreon page. Uh, join Freckles on the hunt to keep us doing this uh, like and share come on guys let's get our names out there like and share if you care oh that was really sweet yeah. let's end it on that like and share if you care love you guys bye